grabbing the emotion so we would go through the team. Omaha in the College World Series. Game two. Yep, feels right. It feels right and it looks right. Check it out. Omaha, the nation's heartland TD Ameritrade is our NCAA College World Series on ESPN presented by Capital One. Another sellout crowd, much of it wearing purple and gold for LSU. The Gators, though, they're the team that could win a championship tonight in this best two of three. They take game one and now they try to end it. How did they take game one? Boy, that guy, Brady Singer, the sophomore, 12 strikeouts, a College World Series Finals record. They came up with the clutch hits and did just enough, and that's what they've done all year. Just enough, but LSU will prove to be a game component tonight as they got their ace on the mound in a game three, and they're winning his pitcher on the mound tonight. That guy is Jared Poche. Alongside Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, and Laura Rutledge with the amazing story of Jared Poche's dad saving a life last night coming up in just a little bit. That is certainly the bigger story than trying to save a season, but for Poche, that's what he's trying to do tonight. He's got more wins than anybody else in LSU history. It's one of the most decorated arms that's ever been at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and for Jared Poche tonight marks his 70th start at LSU. He already has two wins in this College World Series and seems to feel pretty comfortable on this stage. For Jared Poche, He's done just about everything in an LSU uniform, but there's one thing he hasn't done, and that's the very reason he came back to Baton Rouge. The fab four that Coach Minari talks about, you know, me, Greg, and Cole, and Kramer coming back, um, you know, that's the reason we all we all came back to school is to you know get to Omaha and uh, you know win a national championship. You know, as the summer progressed, I remember thinking like, man, we got a lot of you know, we got a lot of talent coming back. We can do something special next year. Growing up and watching, you know, all those guys playing on previous national championship teams, how much fun they had, and you know, I want to be a part of that, and um, you know, hopefully, we can make it happen. Well, he is certainly part of the recipe to win a title. Poche tonight, and their number one, 30th pick in the draft tomorrow night, and Alex Lang. But you got to win this game tonight. And the old cliche, of course, is pitching and defense win ball games. Florida pitched last night, and they played defense. The team that makes an error in the College World Series is 6-10. and 10. They haven't made an error in 41 innings. They haven't, and it all starts right up the middle when it comes to the defense. Dalton Guthrie is the epicenter of it all. He's the one that plays with grit, with pain. It doesn't matter. He's going to lay out and try to make every play possible. From then on, it's contagious. You go to Mike Rivera behind the plate, picking it, throwing out Robertson at second, and you want more arms from the outfield? This is Nick Horvath I introduced to you. He will be in center field tonight. He will be playing for the Gators. The defense is solid, and there is Mr. Guthrie. Yes, Dalton Guthrie, whose dad played for LSU, went on to a major league career. Twice he was in Omaha. Now his son is trying to win it all. There's Maneri and O'Sullivan. Last year, the storyline was win it for Gilly, and Coastal Carolina did. This year, names have changed, storylines the same. For Florida, it's win it for Sully. Laura Rutledge has that story after the break. When you're recruited by Sully, he says, you know, we've never won one. You know, maybe you can be the guy to help us lead us to the national championship. It's just something we've been talking about for so long. You know, this program's been so close. I dreamed about this, you know, once I made the decision to come here. Right now, this is like always been my number one priority. I want to win a national championship. I want to be on that list of the first people to win it for Florida and Gainesville. It's a dream come true to represent the University of Florida, have a chance to win a national championship for the baseball team. It's amazing. Game one winners have swept the College World Series finals seven times. And if Florida was able to win tonight, they bring the first ever Gator Baseball National Championship back to Gainesville. Kevin O'Sullivan said this may not be his most talented team top to bottom, but they've been one of the most fun to coach. It brings tears to his eyes when they jump over the dugout rail after a win. And he said it hasn't always been pretty, but this team is not short on grit, guys. They get plenty of that, and they certainly mirror the image of their Head coach, you see him, Kevin O'Sullivan, Laura mentioned, it may not be the best team that wins this thing. Think about Coastal Carolina last year, the Cinderella story, Virginia, a couple of years ago. It's the team playing the best, and after game one, that's Florida. They hope to get a similar start from this dude who O'Sullivan has already said, Kyle, is the next one. Yeah, I think we're going to see Tyler Dyson in the weekend rotation next year, but this is just his second start of the season. It is frontline stuff. You see a fastball that can get into the mid-90s sometimes, the upper 90s. I think key tonight, though, when LSU gets guys on base, 
you got to slow down the base pass because as a freshman, the only knock on Dyson right now, it's not the stuff, it's potentially the ability to hold runners on. And LSU can create havoc when they get on the base pass, especially early in the ballgame. No doubt. Robertson Freeman hope to get on and move around there at the top of this batting order. As we take a look at it, it's presented by Capital One. Focus today will be on the cleanup hitter, Greg Dykeman. Two for four yesterday with a double. The important thing is this. As a power hitter, left-handed power hitter, once he goes the other way, that means he's starting to get locked in. Keep an eye on that cleanup hitter. Neither team is actually toward the cover off the baseball. And Florida, if they win, may end up with one of the lowest, if not the lowest, batting averages ever for a College World Series champion. And it is a packed house, and it's a different weather pattern tonight than we've had. The wind is blowing in directly from center field. This College World Series, we have seen 23 home runs hit, which is a record, and it blew it up for TD Ameritrade. We're used to seeing 10 home runs like we did last year, but 23 already this season. You're going to hit him tonight. It feels like you're going to have to hit him right down the line, either left field line or the right field line, because from gap to gap, it's not going anywhere tonight. Kramer Robertson will start things off. He's the senior at 5'10", 168, McGregor, Texas. Went in the fourth round of the Cardinals, and that first pitch is in there at 93 miles an hour. If you're going to be anointed the next one at Florida, that means a great deal. We will not see Alex Fiedo tonight. He was the first round pick of the Detroit Tigers, went 18th overall, and has been outstanding at the College World Series. That's him right there. If they get to a game three, many Florida fans believe you could see him in relief, but there's a, there's a few hurdles to climb over before that happens. Brady Singer last right. night, those 12 strikeouts, Paul Maneri, the coach of LSU, I think he'll be the number one pick oh. in next year's draft. And now you get Dyson on the mound. A pitching factory in Florida. For Dyson, you've already seen the velocity, the fastball into the mid 90s. It's a very good slider behind it, too. Robertson to third. Jonathan India. Robertson is retired. For a kid that has made so few starts, Kyle, for that heart to start to come down a little bit, what's going to be the secret for him? Well, I think there's a few things. One, at least he's already pitched in this tournament, so the environment is not going to be different to him. He's been out there. But the second thing is to go back to the Super Regionals because they faced a Wake Forest offense that yeah. was one of the most powerful in the entire country. They led the nation in home runs. Dyson in that Super Regional, seven innings, two hits allowed, didn't walk anybody, struck out ten. So later in the season, Tyler Dyson has been his best. First pitch to Cole Freeman, the number two hitter, the senior, 5'9", 174 pounds. All Freeman does is get on base. Got an on-base streak that was extended to 30 in the Game 1 Finals. And no secret here at this stadium, it's over 80% fans are here from LSU. And what you have to do is shut down this offense early, try to score. That's what Dyson has to do. Shut down the offense and shut down the fans. Two and one. Troy Fullwood's going to call balls and strikes for us tonight. Heath Jones is your umpire at first. Steve Mattingly down there at second. And Greg Street at third. Outfield playing in considerably with the wind on the ground. And that's through. And the speedy Cole Freeman takes a big turn at first. And he puts the brakes on as Guthrie chased that ball down in shallow left. On base again, 31 straight games for Freeman. Looked like India mistimed this right off the bat. Should have had it right yeah. then and there. Wonder if he should not have tried to dive for that baseball. Looked like he was in between a dive or whether or not he, think he could get there standing up. And you could see that ball almost went over the middle of his body when he went to go dive. But it'll go as a single for Cole Freeman, who can absolutely fly. See, with Dyson on the mound and his relative inexperience, Rivera has been very good behind the plate, throwing guys out. If LSU gets anything going here with Antoine Duplantis, the three-hole hitter. Fastball goes high. LSU had a couple of runners thrown out at second last night. And those of you watching at home, many LSU fans wondering if we had instant replay. Would those calls have been overturned? 
Again, there is no instant replay on plays at the bases like you're used to at the major league level. Freeman not going. This one popped up in the air and shallow. The wind's got it. It's blowing it back in, and it's the second baseman, Deacon Lippitt, who makes the play. And there's a great example. If you look at that flag in center field, it is blowing hard straight in. I don't think we've had it blown in from center this hard in this entire tournament. In fact, mo most times it's been blown out yeah. as opposed to blowing in. But 20 to 21 miles an hour from a 408 sign straight towards home plate. Uh, it's a straight ch game game plan change right here. If you're the middle infielders, you have to go out after any fly ball. Cannot give up on it. Here's Greg Dykeman. He's got all sorts of power in that bat, the right fielder. 19 home runs, and the A's loved him. They took him in the second round. Some college baseball news today, guys. I don't know if you saw it, but the Rays, who selected Brendan McKay, the two-way player from Louisville, who we saw here, and you could argue had three of the best collegiate years of anybody ever, agreed to a deal for over $7 million. Dykeman gets under that one, and let's see if the wind plays havoc with it. The third baseman, India, is there, and he makes the play. Good inning for Tyler Dyson. Talk to Jared Pochet's dad, who last night did something few of us ever do. He saved a life. Welcome back, everyone. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Bottom of the first, Florida comes to the plate against Jared Poche, the great lefty for LSU. Last night, while his dad was in the stands watching, Dr. Jerry Poche was approached and said, we need your help. And they did indeed. He ended up saving a man's life. Just a few minutes ago, Laura caught up with Dr. Jerry Poche. Thanks, Dr. Poche. How would you describe the events that had you saving a man's life yesterday? Oh, it was it's pretty amazing. Uh, I got called to go help a, a fella that was in trouble. I come to find out he wasn't breathing. I uh, didn't have a pulse. Uh, clinically, he was dead. We got him down on the ground, started compressions, and, and we we actually got him back. What is it like to save somebody's life? It's an amazing feeling. Uh, that's just what I do all, my whole life. That's my whole career. But it, it's always a great feeling to know that I help someone. Thank you so much. All right. Such an amazing story. He didn't tell his son. He didn't want to be a distraction. Of course, everybody now on the LSU team knows about what happened last night. And just uh, like all doctors, you are always on call. And in fact, earlier this week, after a young boy was hit by a baseball, they right away went to Dr. Poche and he helped them out in that situation. But last night, amazingly, he saved a man's life. And that man now listed in good condition. It's great news, and now he gets a chance to watch his son on the mound. And Jared Poche has, he's done things in his uniform that nobody has. He's comfortable on this stage, and he's already shown it so far in this College World Series. I do think tonight, though, he's got to pitch into the seventh inning. For LSU to have a chance to go through and win this thing, they need one of their two aces, and Jared Poche is one of them, to go deep into this ball game and give him a chance. So he may end up with his uh, teammate Dykeman on the A's. If they can both get there, he was selected in the ninth round. Capital One batting order for Florida. J.J. Schwartz in the three spot against Poche, March 25th, one for three with a double, two runs. They are going to need Schwartz to be aggressive at the plate, use the entire field. All right, we'll start with Deacon Lippett, the second baseman. He's a sophomore at 5'10", 190 pounds out of Oviedo, Florida in the first pitch. He's away, it's 1-0. Lippett and Guthrie, the table setters for Schwartz and really the Bulk of the offense has come from the bottom of these orders. In fact, both of them. That one's in there for a strike. Kyle, March 25th, Poche against Florida. One of his bumps in the road, four innings, four runs, six hits allowed. How much does that factor into tonight's approach? His thinking, the Gators thinking offensively? I'm sure it's in the back of his mind. He, he wasn't sharp in that one. And Poche came into that one about as sharp as anybody in the entire country at that point. But... He walked four, he hit two, gave up three earned runs in those four innings, and had a wild pitch. It was just one of those nights where he just never seemed to be comfortable. Foot race to first, Poche, Lippitt, safe at first base. 
it went off of the chest of Nick Coombs, who's playing first base tonight, and then it was a foot race. And right here, as soon as that ball hits dirt, he has to charge or either take a couple steps back as a first baseman, stays in the, in the between hop, blocks it with his chest, and the hustle right there, he's, he's safe. Good hustle by Lippitt going down the line. And a good call by Heath Jones. So leadoff man aboard for Florida. That brings up Dalton Guthrie, who was playing with terrible back spasms earlier this week. In fact, had to come out of a game. He was able to play last night, played through it, made an unbelievable catch in foul territory. I mean, think about the idea that you had back spasms. You were getting treatment for it. Before the game, you were dealing with some more pain. And then, and then you have to go and dive on dirt to early. make a catch early on. Ripped into right center field. That's going to get down. And Guthrie sends Lippitt to third base. LSU gets the ball back in. But the Gators are in business in Poche's world right out of the gate. Well, that's the same approach as yes. he had yesterday. Thing. Right center field, staying through it, not trying to do too much. It's what happens when you have those back pains. You can't overswing. It's a fluid swing throughout. Poche trying to get that double play, trying to get him to roll over. Goes the other way. Now you have runners at the corners. J.J. Schwartz at the plate. College World Series note, the team that has scored first at the College World Series has won 13 games in a row. They rule Lippitt's infield hit a hit, no error. And the Gators with runners on are hitting 298. Chance for J.J. Schwartz here. A little generous tonight from an official scorer standpoint if that first one's a hit. Yep. Gators win tonight. They win the College World Series, and they are trying to break through first here in the first against Poche. Schwartz is only two for 19. Up. Hey. Well, Michael Papierski with a 2 0 count, and you can tell Poche very frustrated. And the last time we saw Troy Fullwood, he had one of the more pitcher friendly strike zones. I thought it was one of the best zones that we've seen so far at this College World Series. Troy Fullwood has been very consistent behind the plate, and I think he's been fine so far today. I mean, that curveball to me looked like it was high. Right now, you just have to focus on trying to get the double play. Josh Smith at third base playing way too much in, even with the bag at third. J.J. Schwartz, lefty on right. He hit some shots down that hot corner. Get two, forget about the runner at third. And that gets through, and Florida breaks on top, forced three consecutive singles, and they lead it 1-0. And again, that note, the team that has scored first has won the last 13 College World Series games. About 2-0 fastball, and J.J. Schwartz just keeping the party going right here. Fastball, they're trying to go away. That one kind of has some cut to it. And you'll see that sometimes from Poche. Trying to throw the two-seamer away. That one comes back into the barrel. Back to back to back singles for the Gators to start this one off. And it's an early 1-0 lead and an early trip to the mound for Allen Dunn. I can't imagine, and Kyle, you can tell us what this is doing for Tyler Dyson over there on the bench. Well, two things. One, a clean first. Yep. So now you're sitting in there after already having been in the ball game, and you look up, you've got a one nothing lead, and there's still nobody out and two guys standing on base. Exactly. What's he scuffled he against him? Florida. Look at that. I mean, this is historically against Florida, and the start in Gainesville this year was not all that sharp either. Generally with Poche, if he's going to have problems, it comes in the first two innings. If you can allow him to settle in, you're usually going to look, look up in the sixth or seventh and he's still going to be out there, but Florida has struck quick today. You better start using that curveball now. That's the pitch that will get him out of a jam. That fastball right now with the velocity, this is the type of velocity that the Florida Gators love 
feasting off. And this is their best on-base guy they have in the lineup. Nelson Maldonado is the designated hitter. Sophomore at 5'10", out of Tampa, Florida. And once again, Poche falls behind. Florida hasn't gotten a lot of their leadoff guys on. Only 9 of 37, but now 6 of those 9, including Lippitt, have come around to score. Maldonado 4 of 16 at the World Series. This one to right field. It sends Dykeman back. It's going over his head, and he makes a great catch. Both runners tag, and they are both safe. But wow, with the wind blowing as it is, Dykeman didn't read it right. Three things went well. Great baseball all around. First, Maldonado taking this breaking pitch, going the other way with it, making sure that runner from second moves. The play from Dykeman in right field, and then the presence of mind of both runners, Schwartz and Guthrie, advancing on this play. Great play all around, both by the Tigers and by the Gators. Now the question's going to be, did Guthrie leave second base early? He definitely went back with the intent to tag. That ball carried a little bit further than I thought it was going to, and, and clearly a little bit further than Dykeman thought that it was going to, but that could end up being a game-saving catch that he just made. All right, so Cole Freeman's explaining what should happen here. He's going to get on the mound. You don't call time. And he's going to either appeal first base or second base. He's going to appeal first base. All the umpires say safe. I'll say this about Guthrie. If he did leave on time, he left the second that hit Dykeman's glove. Maldonado, a sack fly, moves him up into scoring position for Jonathan India. And the five through nine hitters delivered last night. They had four RBI late on that one. I make him chase from here on out. I don't throw him anything good. You have a left-handed hitter in Austin Langworthy behind him. And tough Mike Rivera. O'Shea trying to navigate around three consecutive singles. Only one run in. Sophomore India behind 0-1. Chases one in the dirt and a good block by Papierski. 0-2. Anxious at the play, Daddy? little anxious you have those runners right there second and third this is where you have to know Jonathan India you have to know the situation you have a left-handed hitter hitting behind you Poche's trying to limit the damage Chased another one, and he's gone in a big, big strike out for Jared Poche. So you can see in the background, Dykeman will catch it there, and he tags there. So he's good at that first good. base. That was good. Yeah, that was good, too. Good call by the umpire and crew. Neither left early. Great camera work also. And now Austin Langworthy, who has really struggled his last two dozen games. 18 for 90, which is 200, but it's getting a little warmer here in Omaha. Five hits and 15 at bats. One here could score two more. If Poche can get out of this thing, only giving up one run, you feel like uh, you feel like you kind of stole one right now if you're LSU because single, single, single on a ball off the bat of Maldonado that looked like it might short hop the fence in right field, but he's one pitch away from getting out of it, giving up just a solo run. Got three at third, Schwartz at second. is a high one and Poche bearing down is a strike away from getting out of it. He's 
Dad, Dr. Jerry Pochet sits and watches. He's watched his son all the way through his LSU career, his high school career, and this is the biggest start of his life. Hold on. Catchers. Catchers, catchers, catchers. Unless they tell you to take the baseball out. Don't turn around and give it to the home plate umpire. Let your guy in the mound decide if he wants to take it out of play. You don't, you don't turn around and offer it. Pick it up and throw it back. If the guy wants to take it out, he'll tell you. So what's your point on the baseball for people who are watching at home? Why you're so uh You want it scuffed up. Yeah. You throw one down in the dirt and they don't they don't make you throw the baseball out. I, I just let the guy on the mound make the decision as to whether or not you want it. If you don't like the feeling of it, you can take it and throw it back in. That's totally different. Watch Papirski's like, nah, we're good. Why don't, why don't we throw this one out? We don't want that. <laughs> Come on now. I'm hoping the hitter said something. Hey, could you uh, please check that baseball? I'm hoping. Langworthy uh, had the wind knocked out of him on that foul ball. So the athletic trainer has gone out to talk to him. Here's the pitcher for Florida staying loose. O'Sullivan. John Nicolino, the athletic trainer, head back to the dugout. Langworthy taking a few breaths, got a little smile on his face. One and two with two down here in the first. They got one, they're trying to get more as Poche is trying to extinguish this flame. This one's going to get into the seats. Take a look at that crowd. There have been massive crowds. Last night, over 25,600. This one's going to be bigger. This one, they're six, eight deep in GA. And that is the longest general admission line I've ever seen in my entire life. And they were down to the Hilton. That's block and a half, two blocks away, then wrapped back through all the way in the parking lot. So yeah. A lot of them were in purple and gold. The parking lot was full. Tailgating today started early. First ticket in the general admission line was at 5.30 a.m. 1-2 left field. Will it hang up for DePlantis? Yes. He's able to reach down and grab it. The Gators strand two. Poche and his dad will take one. Could have been a lot worse. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by the Subway $6 footlong sub of the day. We are back as you see some images of these two teams. The final two teams after the field of 64. Eight of them come to Omaha. We had the Titans, Cal State Fullerton, the Gators, LSU, Cardinals of Louisville were here. Oregon State ends up 56 and 6 this season, one of the great seasons in college baseball history. Texas A&M and the Horned Frogs of TCU, but the last two standing out of the SEC. They each won their respective divisions, co-champions, and now they're trying to settle the big picture here in Omaha. Start things off with Zach Watson. He's been their best hitter at the College World Series in the first pitch from Tyler Dyson is fouled off. What we've seen it early with Zach Watson. They go with the fastball early. After that, it's all been off speed, down and away, getting him to chase. In there for a strike, 0-2, and, and Watson pauses for a second. Eight for 22, a double, a home run, two RBIs. Freshman at six feet, 166. 
and one of the best center fielders we likely will see at the next level. He can move, so Guthrie gets it and fires quickly to get him. So we saw that appeal play on that tag up that was legal. Here's how the umpire explained it to the catcher. Time is out. Time is out. Let me put the ball back in play. I'm not telling you. Let him get on the mound. Let hit him get on the mound, and then I'm going to put it in play. Let him get in the box, and I'll put the ball in play. Here we go. You ready? So that was well explained because it's one of the more confusing things, especially right. at the youth level. How do we do this? Do we call timeout? You don't do that because if the time's out, well, nothing can really happen. Time's going to be in. That was Troy Fullwood saying right there, let me put the ball back in play. So right. if you're going to appeal, let me put the ball back in play, then you can go from there. But ultimately, Paul Maneri was on the bench saying, no, let it go, let it go. Josh Smith, this one's to the gap. Who's going to get it? That just faded into the glove of Austin Langworthy. The wind took that right towards the left fielder, and he ran right into it. Good wood or good aluminum from Smith. Watch this route out in left field by Langworthy, too. And this is when you know that the wind is just going to bring it all the way back to him. Has to go a little bit deeper right there, but you can see those last few steps where he kind of pulls up. He knows he's all the way there, calling for it early. And in that spot, the wind is helping Langworthy, bringing it right back in towards him. So two quick outs for Tyler Dyson, who's been very efficient. Five outs so far, 15 pitches. Yep, he's throwing strikes, getting ahead. This is Nick Coombs, the first baseman, junior 5'11", Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Homegrown kid, grew up in the shadows of Alex Box, and now he gets to play for him in the College World Series. 0-2. Oh, Dyson yep. pitching with the same efficiency and pace that we saw from Singer last night. Ball that's up. Close, but it's not really where you want to throw it there. 0-2, you can see Mike Rivera moved all the way out there. We're trying to bury that slider, and Dyson just got a little bit quick. Coombs and Jake Slaughter have split time. Slaughter played first last night. Coombs tonight. Play. He's got five at-bats at the College World Series. He's got a couple of hits. Slow roller and a tough play if it's going to stay fair, and it is. Swinging bunt for Nick Coombs. And an awkward approach of the ball by Tyler Dyson. You have to love that with two strikes on you. Tough pitch down. Ball stays fair. There's nothing you can do here if you're the defense. You just try to let it see if it rolls out. Mm. Nice play by Dyson. Just trying not to catch that baseball. Almost slips right there. Keeps his balance. Ball dies right on the line. That's the right play, Kyle, right? It absolutely was the right play to me, and it was Mike Rivera that told him to do it, too. You could see Rivera saying, let it go, let it go, let it go. It's the only chance you have. I yeah. mean, if you pick it up, try to speed up a throw, you could throw it down the right field line and totally change Time's everything. The ball, man. Time, time. I mean, at least half the time, that ball's going to hit the edge of the grass and roll foul. Watch Rivera. So Rivera's trailing this one. He's got a great shot at it. and You can see those arms start going, let it go, let it go. But then it just... It just stayed. I mean, it, the spin of it looked like it was going to take it all the way foul, and it just hung right on the edge of the grass. Looked like your golf game. <laughs> Not today. Here's a guy that can hit one out of the yard, wind or no wind. Michael Papirski did something no one has ever done in College World Series history. We played our 1,000th game during this World Series. We're now up to, I think, 1,008. No one had ever hit a home run from both sides of the plate in the same game until he did this week. Oh. One and one. The other part that we haven't got into yet is Dyson on the mound is a converted shortstop, and I don't mean like converted in ninth grade. This is a guy that played shortstop through high school. Not only is he making only a second start, but he's only been pitching for a couple of years. Yeah, just towards the end of his high school year, or is the end of his high school career is when he started pitching. I think he's going to pitch for a while, though. This one ripped into center field. Horvath is there, and that one may have gone a lot longer earlier this week when the wind was blowing dead out blowing in a little different night at td ameritrade gators up one zip we've been through so much this season so much adversity and we fought through it and we, we just have a lot of heart you know we play as a team together 
Keep each other's backs, but no matter what the situation is, we know we can handle it. Everyone's gone through ups and downs. It hasn't been easy, but it's all paid off because we're in the finals now. Hopefully, the University of Florida gets our first national championship. The university has won almost 40 championships, but not one in college baseball. How'd they get here? They won their first five. And of course, one game one against LSU. The offense is not killing it, boys and girls. A 204 average, 17 runs. But boy, that starting pitching has been silly. 54 strikeouts and 33 and a third. And while Tyler Dyson has pitched really well, looks a little bit different tonight than Singer. And he doesn't have a strikeout yet. I would say this if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, when you showed up the ballpark and you saw the flag coming in at 21 mm -hmm. miles an hour. I put a big smile on your face when yeah. you came in because it, it plays right into Florida's game plan. This is Mike Rivera, the sixth round pick. Hit. He was taken by the Cleveland Indians in the 2017 draft. All told, you got 16 players combined, eight of the Gators and eight LSU players taken in the draft this year in the first 40 rounds. You gotta go. You gotta go hard blue and red if, if all the purple and gold is around you. You gotta represent. <laughs> Pretty impressive. That red. Right field tailing towards the seat. Steichman is over there and he watches it get about five or six rows deep. And to that end, Kyle and Eduardo, we've seen now since we've opened the ballpark up in 2011. Uh, generally, not a lot of home runs. This year's a little different, but Paul Maneri said something interesting. He said, I've actually built my teams. I've recruited athletes, defenders, not necessarily the home run guys. As Rivera hits this one to right, and Dykeman goes towards the line to make the play. He's actually building teams for Omaha, Nebraska, for the ballpark. I would say the outfield in particular. So you look at LSU's outfield. DePlantis in left can fly. Watson in center can fly. Dykeman already made a very good defensive play tonight and has turned himself into a very good defensive right fielder. If you can't defend, you do not win at this level right now the way that it's played, especially in this place. No doubt. Different, different frame of reference when you when you recruit for your program, but with the real significant eye yeah. on Omaha. Like that ballpark where we're going to end up, you know, every summer, well, we got to be ready to play in that ballpark. How can you win in this big ballpark? And that's exactly what you have to do. You have to have speed and athleticism in that outfield. And power arms. And I think Florida's at least been at or ahead of the curve that way. Yeah. From a power arm standpoint, yeah. nobody has had more power arms than Florida and Vanderbilt. And those two just continually seem to run out guy after guy that are mid-90s guys. Vanderbilt won the whole thing with Tim Corbin three years ago. This one lifted to center field off the bat of Ryan Larson. Blows towards right. Look out! A little collision out there between Dykeman and Watson. It's Dykeman who held on to it. The wind is going to move it around out there. Dykeman's going to win this one. I don't think Watson ever called it. No, I don't know if he did or not. It's, Dykeman's not a guy you really want to run into out there. Number nine hitter in the order is Nick Horvath, and uh, this guy is a typical college baseball player on a lot of levels. He pitches. He was used as a pinch runner last night, and he was brought in to play center field. Made a great defensive play by throwing out a runner at second base from center field. To third underneath the dive of Josh Smith. And once again, bottom of the order delivers for the Gators. Horvath is aboard. it will be multi-talented, multi-faceted. Well, you talk about being a game changer, and Nick Horvath coming in late for defense. Coach O'Sullivan puts him out there, and this is how he rewards him. Nice throw to second base, getting a big out at second base. Buddy Boob texted me last night, too, and it was a good point. If it's a right-handed center fielder, he's safe. I mean, the only guy that can make that play is the left-handed center fielder, which Horvath is going to that side. He was already open, a lot easier to make that throw, and it took a perfect strike to have any chance. Back to the top of the order, Deacon Lippitt, the official scorer, must have heard Kyle. 
But that was originally awarded a single on that bouncer to first base that went off the chest of Coombs. Remember, he then beat it out and came around to score after a couple more singles. Well, that has been changed to an error, so it's an unearned run charged to Poche. Not an earned run. And that was a right call. They throw, they got him picked off. Now the ball is dropped and a big break for Florida. Horvath was caught between first and second, and Coombs had to come out of his glove. As a first baseman, you have to attack this throw. You cannot stay there at first base. You attack, you cover some ground, and then you bring the baseball towards your chest to make the exchange. You see how there's separation between the chest and the glove? That's where a lot of mistakes are made. It's called about funneling in and making that exchange close to your body. It's a big mitt. A lot of mistakes are made outside of the body. Well, now a chance for Lippitt to drive in a run. He swings like he wanted to hit it out of the yard, and he's behind 0-2. Told you at the top, errors here generally hurt World Series. Teams that have committed at least one are 6 and 10. Remember the three games that LSU played here prior to this. Jake Slaughter started at first base. Yep. Nick Coombs in there tonight and has not looked terribly comfortable yet. One and four. Coombs did get a single when he batted in the second inning. Keep giving away out to keep adding pitches to Jared Poche. Florida wins tonight, they win the whole thing. LSU could force a game three tomorrow night. Back up the middle, pass Robertson, rounding third is Lippitt. And it is two nothing. I should say Horvath who comes in to score. So the mistake costs Florida big time. He can Lippitt, RBI. Guys, we talk about the errors being made and good teams capitalizing on this. Florida Gators capitalizing on that mistake at first base and then the big base hit with two strikes by Lippitt up the middle. He that, knows the importance of it. Is that 0-2? 1-2. 0-2, 1-2. But one two. he really stayed on that breaking ball. Left on left breaking ball the second time today that Lippitt has seen Poche that time shot it right back up the middle. Well, now Dalton Guthrie, who shot one into right field the first time up. This one on the ground, kick. Robertson's still got to play. Safe! And another error for LSU. What's going on? LSU had been really good in the field, the 981 fielding percentage. Smith makes his ninth error of the season. Defensively, too, that's, I mean, this is one of the better teams you'll see in the entire country over the course of the season, but it has not looked that way so far for LSU today. Josh Smith's probably going to be the shortstop next year, and this one, they're lucky and even had a chance to make this play because that hardly hit his glove, goes right off his shoe. Kramer Robertson in the right spot, but Guthrie, that right foot hits just before the baseball gets to Coombs at first base, so LSU should have been out of this inning twice already. J.J. Schwartz to the plate who already has a single today. Calls out a strike to J.J. Schwartz, and then he tells him to stay right here. Three errors in the game for LSU. That one is inside. Coombs had the error on the drop ball. And then Smith, so three errors. You see, I mentioned the Florida streak, 41 consecutive innings. They had had one that had been 30 innings without an error. Oh. Inside, second straight inning, and this puts a lot of pressure on the defense, on Poche. But they've had traffic on the base paths. This is green light right here for J.J., and you better be careful. Hit a 2-0 fastball the last time to left field for a single. I'm just surprised that Smith is still playing in 
couple steps behind the bag. You have to play deep here. Runner at second. Oh. Three and one. Three one. A.J. Schwartz has been around. He's a junior. He played the College World Series a couple of years ago, but he has 37 career home runs. And he went from being a 17th round pick a couple of years ago to being a 38th round pick because his numbers have come down a little bit. There's a chance you get him back next year. Chance for a big hit here at 3-1, and he was swinging for it. Going. This one on the ground is short. Good hop for Robertson. He sprints over to first. He held the bag. A nearly disastrous play there. I've seen Robertson do it a bunch where he'll take a few steps toward first, but this time give Coombs, who's got a couple of errors, credit for keeping that right foot on the bag and nearly doing a full split to make the play. Ooh. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. In between innings, all the umpires got together. Kevin O'Sullivan went out and just asked if they would just communicate amongst themselves on whether Coombs kept the bag with his foot. He did, and the uh, umpires then reminded us that he was called out once, and he's still out. The bigger issue there, and I would ask you, Eddie, is what was Robertson doing? This was the discussion that they had in between innings. Let's listen in. Hey, uh, what do you got? I got him. I, I got him catching the ball, then coming off the base. So catching it, foot on the base, foot on the base. Out. Right. You got a good angle. What do you have? I got the same thing. I got him standing on there. I got a guy coming. I got a guy running. But you got score. him on the base. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't say that guy's on that bag. I will tell you from my angle. I also created an angle. Yeah. I saw him catch on the bag and come off. Right. So what what did you have? Good. Good. I got him on. Okay, so we're gonna go go with that as well. Okay, uh, I'll, yeah. go ahead, I'll go ahead. Signal. Signal. Point and get him cannon. So nope. we'll go right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah. He's out. Terrific job by the umpire and crew to make sure that uh, they were in the majority in agreement. And they were. Jones, Mattingly Street, Collins, and Winters as we bring them in down the left and right field line to have that conversation. It's perfect. Get everybody's opinion just to make sure nobody saw it differently. And in the end, they were all absolutely right. Just surprised me, Kramer Robertson taking like five steps to yeah, I didn't throw that baseball. First pitch strike. How about the effort that Dyson's putting up by throwing that first pitch strike and getting ahead? It seems like every batter. Well, it's big, and if he stays this efficient too, he can work deep into this ball game. Slider misses. This is Bo Jordan, the DH, out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. And of course, in August we'll have the Little League World Series. Bo Jordan's Lake Charles, Louisiana team was there. He played with his brother not too long ago. Bottom of the zone, he gets the called strike at 93 miles an hour. What do you like about Tyler Dyson? For a guy that throws this hard, it's pretty simple mechanics. There's not a lot moving, so he starts out of the stretch and shows you again that you don't have to go to the windup to throw hard. It's just kind of get it and go. Not a lot of hard contact, Laura. Yeah, and as you guys mentioned, Tyler Dyson, of course, not beginning to pitch until his senior year of high school. When he got to Florida, he was around the mid-80s to upper 80s in velocity. Kevin O'Sullivan got a hold of him, raised the arm slot a little bit, taught him not to drag his elbow and push the ball, instead to throw it. And suddenly, he's throwing mid-90s, even touching 97 at times. Guys, he got his slider grip from Alex Fiedo, but he doesn't think about throwing a slider. He thinks about actually just throwing a fastball. He's getting some help from his fielders while Jared Prochet is not. That one was sent into center field and Nick Horvath makes the play. A little more on Dyson and how he ends up at Florida. He grew up in a town outside of Boston, Uxbridge, Massachusetts. He grows up, 
in a neighborhood that has Rick Azadorian. I'm not sure a lot of people remember that name, but Rick Azadorian grew up in the same town as the Dyson kids did. He was a little bit older, and he was recruited to play baseball at Florida. At the same time, the Red Sox drafted him in the first round. So he ended up choosing to go and play professional baseball. But at the same time, all the little kids in the neighborhood, because Rick was such a popular guy, fell in love with the Gators, because that's where he was going to go. So literally, the seed for Dyson and Florida was planted when he was like two years old. As the Dorian's down in Florida, that's where the Dyson family moves when he's about eight years old. And he and Azadorian get together. And Azadorian's the one that says, you can throw it like 95. So instead of the shortstop thing, you should become a pitcher. And that's how he ends up being a pitcher at Florida. As Laura talked about how he transitioned and Kyle from a shortstop to a pitcher with about a year to go in high school. Well, he's not going back short. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, he's found his home now. You know what the fun part about it is? That's a fresh arm, too. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yep. You're a scout. You know that that arm does not have a lot of mileage in it. It's also a fresh arm tonight. Yes, it is. Because he has not had that many innings over the course of this year. The longest outing for Dyson this year was five innings against Wake Forest in the Super Region. And the former shortstop slips, throws from his knees, out at first base. Well, that's how to pay the story off as a former shortstop. You can get it over there from your knees. Balls don't leave the infield. And he's there to catch it. And he threw out one of the fastest guys in the country in Cole Freeman. Right now, it's all going Gators way. Two and a half in the books, two nothing, Florida. TD Ameritrade and the locals, it's starting to grow on them here. Of course, Rosenblatt Stadium had hosted the College World Series, and so now we're at TD Ameritrade, have been for 2011, and we got a long, long-term deal with the College World Series in this ballpark. Jake Slaughter has come on to play first base, where he has played most of the time. Nick Coombs, who really struggled defensively, is out of the game as we begin the third inning, and Nelson Maldonado. Two ways to look at it. They've been sloppy, and they should be down, but the truth is they're only down 2-0, and yeah. they've been real sloppy. They should probably be down more than this. Florida's left four guys on in the first two innings. Oh. And he watched Maldonado and he gets very relaxed or he seems to be at the plate. Before that ball comes in, he gets into a real good hitting position, doesn't he? Back up the middle, he's got a hit. He's comfortable at the plate. Sees the ball really well off Poche, March 25th. Had a very good game against him also. And what he does, he stays up the middle the other way. We saw that fly ball to right field earlier. And there, right back up the middle. Trusting his hands. Holding that bat light, comfortable. Gets that leg kick up. And once that foot comes down, just shoots it right back up the middle. Lead off man aboard, India. Talk to Kevin O'Sullivan. This is the guy that he says may have the most upside of anybody in this lineup. And why do you think he says that, Kyle? Well, offensively, and the numbers might not play it out this year. India hitting 269 coming into the game with six home runs. But he's just a guy that Kevin O'Sullivan thinks is going to continue to grow as a hitter and defensively really thinks that he can stick at third base. We'll see if the power is enough. But offensively, it's a compact swing, and it hits the barrel a lot. He did it again right there. Two. More hits for Florida here to start this third inning. Florida, seven hits, Laura, right now as they're tattooing Poche. Yeah, and they may think it has something to do with a little thing they call the rally cup. This happened last night. Alex Fiedo and company had this cup, and it got slapped out of their hands by Lars Davis. They decided that was their rally cry. So they took the cup. They bagged it up in a nice plastic bag last night, decided they needed to keep it with them. Alex Fiedo has dubbed himself the Lord of the Rally Cup. He is keeping it very safe. There's a few random sunflower seeds in that bag. They don't know how it got there, but they're going to keep the bag safe from the wind. Below the bag, there is a little circle guarding it. There's a little piece of beef jerky in there. Oh. They said that's because the cup gets hungry sometimes, so in case it needs a snack, no. it's ready to go. No, cups don't get hungry. <laughs> they, they just don't. <laughs> We're all good. And then, then the hunger thing, that's you got to draw the line at some point. 
They have fun. Every college team we saw Arizona last year, Vanderbilt certainly in years past. Personalities of college students, outstanding creativity off the map. So two on. Now you got a chance for Langworthy to move them up. They had taken away that hit in the first inning. So six hits allowed, not seven, by Jared Poche. He's in the third. He's got a pitch count creeping towards 50. Langworthy squares again. He has not been asked to do this very much this year. Just one sack bunt on the season for Langworthy. Yes! It looked like it there. Very uncomfortable when that pitch yeah. is coming in. The approach, though, he moves up on the plate. Does everything well except that. You wouldn't ask him to do that again, would you, after what you just saw? I would not. Not with two strikes. Second time that Langworthy is seeing Poche. He flew out to left his first time up. So Poche has had to work real hard, and not all of it has been his doing here through three innings. Foul back. Depending on the team and the coaching philosophy, some utilize the bunt a lot, sacrifice a lot. Some hit and run, some safeties. These are not teams I think that you would put in the, they do it all the time. But it is something you wonder why, why they don't do it better. Why don't you, do you practice it? Why don't you practice it more often? To get a bunt down, just if you're going to be asked to do it. They practice it plenty. Florida doesn't do it a ton. I mean, just 25 sack bunts in the course of the season, so they're not asked to do it much. But during crunch time right now, very important run on second base. Very important run. You have Mike Rivera on deck, a contact hitter. You can also squeeze. You know, the Major League Baseball theory, it's almost as if it shifted. We don't, they never do it. We don't do it. We're not giving them away. It trickles down a little bit. But the inability to do it and on the ground to first and foul, the inability to do it when you want it, just feels like it's a frustrating endeavor. And we, this isn't the only time we've seen it here. The inability to get a bunt down. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, what I saw from Langworthy, I would not ask him to do it again. Right. It just he, he did not look comfortable doing it. Um, and offensively, I mean, he's already hit a home run in this tournament. He hit it off a fair pole to left field. I wonder what the coach thinks, though. Can we get a bunt down? And then, oh, yeah. th then well, the reverse is, well, how often do we do it? How often do you ask me to do it? I promise you Kevin O'Sullivan won't be excited about the approach. 2-2 two, two beats that one into the ground. High hop. Only Works. one play for Freeman. It's the same thing. Moves the runners up by getting the ball on the ground on the right side. Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, right here on ESPN. Minnesota Twins, Paul Malder's team, once again, having a good season. They take on the Red Sox. In the final game of that four-game set, it streams live on the ESPN app. Minnesota Twins and the Boston Red Sox, Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And, of course, on the Major League level, this Sunday we'll have our All-Star Selection Show on ESPN at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we start focusing on the Home Run Derby, which comes up on the 10th. So Langworthy moves him over, and Rivera, who's been real clutch, looks like they're going to intentionally walk him. I like this play. This is what you have to do. You have to go for the force. You have Larson that has been struggling, finally got a hit yesterday. And after him, Horvath, which already had a hit. But this is the play you have to make. And the baseball purist, here you go. You don't get to see this very much anymore. That's right. The four-pitch intentional walk. So as you're watching this, did you miss it? Did I miss it? Yeah, you know, do you really no, miss it? No, I think the... it gives us time to at least talk about the strategy involved here. So, yes, I do miss it. You do, because it, <laughs> it, less time for you to talk. <laughs> no, it's not about less time for me to talk. It's about talking about strategy. I love the part that Jonathan India, going from first to second, he got in the throwing lane. It, it, of Freeman. Did you see Freeman's look too. Yep. His initial thought was to throw that ball to second. It was. Base. It was the throw, yeah. but that's what created the uh, the throw to first base. That's a heads up base run. Those little things go unnoticed. You don't Here. find that in the scorebook. No, you don't. We're going to find it in our truck pretty soon. You're going to be able to see it. But first, Ryan Larson bats with the bases loaded. He flew out to right, and my goodness, has Florida had chances here in the first three innings? So 
see, this is what happens when you're a young player. And, and watch the watch the lane here. When he's, when he's running right there, see how he opens up, gets in that throwing lane, and Freeman cannot. He cannot throw that ball to second base. There's no angle to throw that baseball. He changed the route. Per yeah, perfectly done by Jonathan India, changing that route. He's at second base, Maldonado at third, and Mike Rivera sits there at first after the intentional walk for Ryan Larson, the senior, out of Orlando, Florida. Every time that ball's up in the zone, Larson is hacking away at it. Time for that curve on the dirt. Yep. One for 18 at this College World Series. Florida up 2-0, up 1-0 in this best two of three. They get a win tonight, and they will claim their first College World Series baseball title. LSU's won a half dozen of them. LSU's been here 18 times since 1986. Right down the middle, Larson just got frozen. And a big pitch from Poche. He attacked him. It's pretty clear what Larson was looking for, too. Looking for that 0 2 curveball, and instead, Jared Poche throws it right down the middle, and Larson just can't pull the trigger. Big, big pitch for Poche right there. That's a spot where you absolutely need a strikeout on the mound. So the nine hitter, Nick Horvath, who singled and scored, is. Regarded as one of the better defenders, which is why he's playing, why he's batting ninth. Kevin O'Sullivan has pushed the right button so far in Omaha. Last night he said we needed Singer to go deep and hand it off to Michael Byrne, their closer, and that's exactly what happened. Talk with the coach of LSU, Paul Maneri, in the next half inning. So stay tuned to see what he's got to say about his team's lack of precision tonight in the biggest game they've played all year. And now 2 0. Dyson has had a lot of time to rest each inning because of all the base runners that Florida has had. Oh, three and O. Oh. And the number nine hitter, Nick Horvath, who taken a few here. Horvath is a 179 hitter this season. That's one. I have him swinging here. 3 1. After his last at bat, hit it hard on a line drive base hit. Why not? Here we go. 3 1. You have him taken, Kyle? No, I let him hit. I would let him hit. Sixty fifth pitch of the night. We're in the third inning. Now Poche is one away from making sure it stays only two nothing. Boy, extending their life here. LSU fans on their feet. Except for Jared Poche's father. Huge pitch only in the third inning. Popped up and out of play. Oh, 
hard is it, Eddie, as a hitter, not to swing in a ball that's close so you don't leave the bases loaded and you end up with a bat on your shoulders? No, right now, anything close, you're swinging. That's why I like the 3-1. You pinhole 3-1. 3-2, you do not put this on the umpire's hands. You're looking for something up. So you stay through it. Popped up, playable on the infield. Smith, wind, now Robertson, and an out. They have left seven on through three innings. Five of them in scoring position. It's only two nothing. Feels like it could be six. LSU in business through three. Back with LSU head coach Paul Manarian. Coach, how is Jared Poche able to get out of a bases loaded jam right there? It's what he does, you know. I mean, we haven't given him much help on defense, and he's had to throw a lot of pitches. You know, he got second and third one out. We do the intentional walk, and then he gets a clutch strike out and makes it goes 3-0 on the next hitter and gets out of it. He's done that his whole career. That's why he's Mr. Clutch. All right, thank you. Thank you. Carl. Yeah, the intentional walk did work. Eduardo loved the move, and it paid off even after falling behind 3-0. Well, they've done it a little different ways today. For Tyler Dyson, hasn't struck anybody out, hasn't walked anybody, just 31 pitches and three scoreless. And for Jared Poche, six hits, he's walked one. Florida has left seven guys on in the first three innings. Poche's given up just two runs. He does have a knack of getting out of those type of situations, but at some point you're going to get burned. He's really kept it to about as much of a minimum from a run standpoint as he possibly could today. Once again, Dyson gets ahead 0-1. Tyler Duplantis, an interesting story himself athletically, it comes from a tremendously athletic family. This left fielder, the sophomore from Lafayette, Illinois, pops this one up to center field, and Horvath is there for the out. Duplantis comes from a family of pole vaulters, of all things. His dad was one of those alternates on the Olympic team that boycotted the Olympics back in the 80s. His brother has set a world junior record of 19 feet 4 inches, and while many have basketball nets in their yards and maybe a, you know, a place to hit some balls into a net, he has a pole vaulting pit in his yard. <laughs> Mom was a heptathlete. Pole vaulting party at the Duplantis house. What was it you said the other day? You would have to sign a waiver if you're going to go <laughs> yeah, you get the a house? You have a birthday party. You got to sign a waiver before you come in. <laughs> have fun. Thanks for the present. Can you please have your mom sign down at the bottom before you come inside? Two and zero. Oh, Greg Dykeman looks at that neon colored bat. He's had the neon colored bat since he was a freshman. When he first arrived. He wasn't sure he was ever going to get a chance to use it. Become one of the most prolific hitters in LSU history. Once you start hitting right, Eddie, with the neon or whatever color, you don't trade the bat in. No, you don't. It's your best friend for a long time. Hey, one thing for the 25,000 plus that we have on hand tonight, they're waiting for a reason to explode, and Tyler Dyson has uh, made sure they haven't had one. It's been a lot of soft contact tonight. LSU just has not, they have not looked comfortable at the plate yet against Dyson. 2 2 inside. 3 2. Guys, Kevin O'Sullivan said he had the perfect guys to give a pep talk to Tyler Dyson, Brady Singer, and Alex Fiedo before this game. Singer said, hey, beware of the crowd. They're louder than I've ever heard before, but he said you can quiet them if you throw strikes. Well, he's been doing that. This one looks like it's going to get to the seats. Dalton Guthrie, don't dive over there this time. It's in the seats. That win really took over. Got through and after it like he did last night early. And again, this is the shortstop who's been dealing with the back spasms. I've never seen somebody go into a full sprint. This one had no chance to stay in. Last night's did, and this was early in the game. Look at how far he ran and then dove and ate a bunch of dirt that he was 
telling people even after the game he was still finding little pieces of in his mouth. That set the tone. Set the tone yesterday for the fans to quiet down and the Gators to believe. Well, there's the first walk issued by Tyler Dyson tonight. It's to Dykeman, and because they've been so fortunate in keeping these base runners from scoring, all of a sudden you get the tying run coming to the plate. Zach Watson, the center fielder, only a freshman. In there for a strike. Watson's probably as fleet of foot as any center fielder we've had here. And certainly this year, and you could argue in years past, only as a freshman. Last night, though, with the wind blowing out, and perhaps real hard to see the ball, he had one go over his head that landed on the warning track that on a night like this, which is a little cloudy, likely would have caught. Right field, Larson drifts over to his left, and he makes the play. So, LSU and their fans certainly hope we're doing this again tomorrow night with a game three. And the winner take all, best two out of three. And LSU has got it lined up, so their superstar pitcher, Alex Lang, would be on the mound. Will not be facing Alex Fajardo, who's the ace of the Gators. That would be the dream matchup. But Lang is ready. Fajardo could possibly come out of the bullpen. Game one winners won 10 of the 14. That's 71%. There have been seven sweeps. Get to a game three, though, and it becomes a toss-up. Runner oh. goes, throw down. No, they don't even get it down. Dykeman in a scoring position with a stolen base. So the last two nights, or really the time that we've seen Florida in this College World Series, when Singer's out there, when Fajardo's out there, their times of the plate are 1-2, one, 1-2-5. Two, one, two, so 1.2, 1.25 seconds. Dyson's about 1-4-5. Mm -hmm. So that difference is one of the reasons why LSU took a chance right there on a straight steal. Dykeman gets his seven stolen base of the year. Right here. Well, now you get a chance to see how Tyler Dyson deals with base runner in scoring position. Play. The LSU offense has been terrific in the College World Series. A 324 average. With runners in scoring position, little slider to even the count up at one and one. That idea that Laura brought up to Kyle is Kevin O'Sullivan's going to come on up and talk to his freshman. This sort of lineage, this passing down, the idea that Fiedo can talk to Singer, who's a sophomore, which means he's here next year, which means he can then talk to. Dyson, you can see the chain and how it kind of passes down and they keep finding these guys with these arms. Well, here's the other thing. When you have that guy that you can learn a slider from, so Dyson's only been pitching a few years. And we know the arm strength, and, and he's actually had very good control this year for a kid that hasn't pitched that long. But to learn a slider from a guy that may have the best collegiate slider in the entire country, that's a decent guy to learn that <laughs> pitch from. I think. That's Fajardo you're talking about with a slider. It's hard to emulate what Singer does. Singer, Singer may have. Would you argue? Would you? Would you consider better stuff that even Fajardo does? Just raw Ready stuff. Center? Yeah. I, that is. Yeah, I think some nights you're absolutely, you're absolutely correct. They're doing it with two pitches too. That, that change up slider. is irrelevant. That's the impressive part. Yep. Fastball slider for both. All right. So after a meeting with the coach O'Sullivan, back to work one and one in there for strike two. So is this guy tonight. Fastball slider for Dyson. We have not seen him throw a change up yet. One and two. And the dirt foul, foul, foul ball. Foul, foul ball. Foul, 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 foul. Let me see it. Let me see it, bitch. I don't think anything's getting by Troy Forward tonight. We're still one and two. One and two. 
Good type of pitcher. He wanted that baseball, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He even acted like he didn't hear Troy Fullwood yelling for him the first time. Now just keep walking. Maybe he won't say anything else. Keep walking. Now he's still yelling at him. Now I got to turn around. Hold it down. Ooh, close pitch. But the count evens up two and two. And it was out. It looked better because Rivera moved all the way off the plate. Keeps doing it, Rivera. I mean, he is he's centered in the other batter's box. It was close, but it's out. Yep. Smith was the guy that last night hit that ball to center field that Horvath fielded and threw him out at second base. Four for 21 at the College World Series. Dykeman's at second. He's gone. 93 miles an hour. And the freshman walks off the mound without giving up any runs. It's exactly where Mike Rivera wanted it just before. Said, I want the fastball up and out of the zone. First strikeout of the day for Tyler Dyson. Gets him out of the fourth inning. Still has not allowed a run. Back with Florida head coach Kevin O'Sullivan. Coach, what can you say about the job that Tyler Dyson has done so far? He's done a great job. I mean, he's mixing, mixing his fastball both sides of the plate and got a big strikeout there. Um, with Smith with a high fastball, he's been throwing a slider for strikes early and late in the count, and he's given us everything we've asked for him so far. Plenty of opportunities offensively against Jared Poche. How can you get a little more going? Well, we're putting ourselves in good position. We just we just got to have another good at bat here or there with with runners in scoring position. You know, we're having good at bats all night. Just the one the, the bad ones have been at the most inopportune time. It seems like so. Just doing just keep doing what we're doing, and hopefully we get another couple of big hits. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Carl. All right, Laura, thank you. Say this about Kevin O'Sullivan. He's here with his two children. And he's been very loose this week. Have you noticed that about yeah, him? Yeah, I agree. He absolutely has. And if I had four different guys I could throw out there that are throwing 92 to 95, I'd be pretty loose, too. It's his younger daughter, Peyton. His son, Finn, has been here. They've been everywhere. I mean, they're on the field before the game. They're throwing. They're playing catch. He's playing catch with them before the game. He had Finn throwing batting practice before the game off the field. 0-1, jam shot. Robertson's going out. Is anybody going to get there? Caught by the left fielder. Good hustle from Antoine Duplantis. Yeah, so this is pregame, and that's, uh, that's, gotta dive. that's number half. That's we got to dive. Finn. He's got to dive for everything. Peyton's out there, whacking away at Nick Horvath. You're not getting a lot of this, you know, like 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before a game in most places, <laughs> but we're getting it here. <laughs> There's Peterson calling the strike on the pitch. He told me I had to be the umpire. <laughs> Pretty big zone. <laughs> told me. I, 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 <laughs> guy swung. <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan's been here six times. And never had they gone to the finals and won a game. Never been up one zip as Guthrie skies this one on the infield. Two down. For more on the 2017 College World Series, including the top headlines and highlights, log on to NCAA.com. Maybe a 1 2 3 inning for Jared Poche after spending so much energy, and we got fans still filing in. Now you're starting to see some blue and some orange, a little more Florida colors on the outside. The LSU fan walked in as soon as the gates opened, and they were around the outfield as Paul Maneri took a lap. Jace Robertson of Duck Dynasty fame, he's here tonight, so he went out there and talked to some of the fans and signed some baseballs pregame. They make it festive, there's no doubt about it. But what a difference as far as the decibel level tonight. I do think for Florida, even though you haven't seen it in this setting, they have seen it at Alex Box. So you know the environment potentially you're going to be playing in because they do it in Baton Rouge every other year. Well, it's a real tribute to the fans of the Tigers. It absolutely I mean, is. It really is. They travel and they show up and they cheer and they celebrate and they get there early. Who wouldn't want to play for a program that has the fans as rabid and as enthusiastic as this? It's a 
real appeal, I would think, to the college student. One and two. Florida likes Nickelback. What's wrong with Nickelback? Everything. <laughs> How many pitches is it for Poche before you start to get, as a as a coach, concerned because, as you said, the bullpen's a little. Zach Hess is kind of where they want to go. Well, 100 is the number that I think you would look at. This is kind of an arbitrary there, number. There that's that's caught. That's caught on a line. Jared Poche, that's his first one, two, three inning. Bottom of the order coming up, which has been good news for LSU. Welcome back to Omaha as you take a look at the logos of the schools that were here this year. And only three have won national championships in football, basketball, and baseball. Michigan, Ohio State, and UCLA as Florida is attempting to join that list with a win. Good inning for Poche. See if they can start with some offense. Slaughter bats for the first time as he came on to replace Nick Coombs at first base. Dyson, who picked up his first strike out of the night, starts off with a ball. Dug out into the two. seats. So in recent years, Virginia, Vanderbilt, last year Coastal, but they're in Florida. There do appear to be LSU like pitching factories where you just produce pitchers. And the appeal for a high schooler who wants to go to a college to become a pitcher is there a long list or a short list of places where they develop and then move them into the pros? Because we've seen Vanderbilt do a bunch of them, Florida do a bunch of them. Yeah, there's those that have been more consistent at it. LSU as well. Yep. Oh. Florida clearly is is one that comes to the forefront, especially in the last few years. I mean, the pitchers that they had drafted last year, and I think ultimately the guys that will pitch in the big leagues, but LSU's had their share. Nola, Gosman. Yep. Oh. Didn't get the call on a close one on the 2-2, and now he goes full 3-2. Philadelphia Philly fans have a very high pick, number one next year, looking at Brady Singer. They certainly have watched the College World Series with interest. Fayetto went to the Tigers, 18th overall. So that one's a cool foul. Baseball season is about 70 games long. You got LSU at 52 and 19, Florida 51 and 19. And then like every other season that lasts that line, go through some peaks and valleys. Both of these teams, whether it be for injuries or pitching or competition, have had some down periods. Lead off walk and the crowd into that as Slaughter gets to first base. And get it on nine pitch at bat. Slaughter. Fouling pitches off. Doing a nice job getting on base for this man. 
Michael Papirski, these were the two shots Saturday against Oregon State. One from the left side and one from the right side. He's got three at the College World Series, and that was the first time in College World Series history. With Dad capturing it on his phone that somebody has homered in the same game from both sides of the plate. Nice bat speed on the inside part of the plate. Yesterday they attacked him away. Look at first pitch fastball. Got first pitch slider right there. Michael Byrne makes his way down to the bullpen right now. Michael Byrne's the closer. Got his 19th save of the year yesterday. Guys, Kevin O'Sullivan said he could go as early as the sixth inning to Michael Byrne, and then he said Jackson Coar put something in his mind. He said if they're up by a couple runs, maybe three runs, maybe even less, Jackson Coar could come into this game at some point after Byrne pitches a couple innings. I think the decision okay. is if you have a chance to win the whole thing tonight, do it. Win it. Mm -hmm. Or at least do everything you can to win it tonight. You worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, if it doesn't work. His point was oh, two. if I only need Kowar for two innings, and the Kowar that we saw the other day for two innings was lights out. I really like the strategy. Well, I like the strategy too with Alex Lang if you're Florida. Got to pitch for LSU tomorrow night. And that's why. I mean, it certainly tips in the favor Absolutely of LSU. Absolutely, it does. You look at Byrne prior to the College World Series, his last, you know, five outings, two innings, three innings, two and a third, five innings against South Florida, two and two thirds against Marist. They actually considered starting him. He threw 28 pitches last night, though, and that's got to be a factor. One, two, Papirski. First base, tough play. Pitcher covers, they get the one out. Saw Schwartz range way to his right. Lippitt was there, and Dyson does a good chant, does a good job getting over to first. It's a nice job by Dyson making sure he gets there. No hesitation whatsoever. First baseman tries to make the play, but Lippitt is right there to make it. Nice throw, and you always have to check the runner, the lead runner. Here, Bo Jordan. He didn't homer from both sides of the plate, but he did homer at the College World Series. A tomahawk chop down the left field line that left. Back up the middle, Guthrie throws him out. Two down to third base. Goes Slaughter. The more I think see Guthrie, the more I like him. That first step is dynamic. Yep. Getting to it, always there for the right hop. Watch him in the corner of your screen, takes that hop. You can tell now his back is feeling better. Plays the hop perfectly. Makes the exchange perfect throw to first base. Watch the first pitch of this at bat. We've seen Kramer Robertson be really aggressive on first pitches all the way through this College World Series. I'd be surprised if he gets a first pitch fastball here. He has been Mr. Clutch in a lot of ways all season long for LSU. Side called strike one at 93. Missed his spot, was trying to go fastball away. It came all the way back in and had such good movement that Kramer Robertson gave up on it. Don't forget the last two hits Ro Robertson has had have been on breaking pitches. Regular basketball coach Kim Mulkey, mom of Kramer Robertson. Away one and one. Robertson this season. A 476 slugging, but he got on a lot. His runs led the nation. A hit would cut this lead in half. Beats it on the ground to short. 
Guthrie throws him out. Robertson is 0 for 3. Runner stranded at third. Four and a half in the books. Only two hits for LSU. You know, when you land a perfect knockout punch, it's just feel good because, you know, when you hit the guys, and it's like feel, you, you can feel in your arms and like the, and the guy knocked down and you just realize, oh, it's just the time, you know, the fight is going to be done. Saturday 9 Eastern Time, live on ESPN. ESPN Deportes in the ESPN app. Manny Pacquiao will take on Jeff Horn. We'll be in Brisbane, Australia for that. So why are we showing you this, Kyle? Maybe this is the next guy to take on Manny Pacquiao. Bud Crawford, number six ranked pound for pound fighter in the entire world, sold out to Century Link Center three times. Madison Garden the last time, but Omaha born and bred, 31 and 0 with 22 knockouts. The WBO, WBC junior welterweight champion. Got a big 14 hour time difference between Brisbane and the East Coast of the United States, but. And again, 9 Eastern time live on ESPN for Manny Pacquiao and Jeff Horn. Of course, Sports Center coverage following the fight. As we begin the bottom of the fifth, Jared Poche. Only down 2 0. He has thrown almost 80 pitches. Nick Horvath has gone out to start to throw in the Florida bullpen. That, of course, is the center fielder. Now he's out there throwing in the Gator bullpen. He's scheduled to hit sixth in the inning. That's why Maldonado is so dangerous. He has he has a game plan right there. 2-0. He was looking middle away, middle in. He has the discipline to take that pitch. Tell you what, for as inconsistent as Poche has looked today, it's pretty telling. Just about how many jams this kid has the ability to get out of that he's only given up two runs. And and you heard Paul Maneri talking about it earlier that it's just kind of the way he works a lot of times. That time three one fastball catches the inside part of the plate. There's not a lot of times that Poche pitches yep. that it's comfortable. But usually when you look up at the end of the day, he's going to give you a chance to win. And he has not had his good stuff today, but still, it's a two-run ball game here in the fifth. One man down. Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings. It's the update as the teams compete for a combined $400,000 scholarship donation from Capital One. On the men's side, Ohio State leading North Carolina. Cardinal of uh, Kyle Stanford right there. Come on, boys. Women's Stanford. Uh, that's, that one's in the bag. That's, that's a blowout. In the bag. Yeah. That is a blowout. North Carolina men's basketball team won the championship. This one to right. Back goes Dykeman. Back to the track, and he reaches up. And just like that, he went from a behind in the count to the leadoff man Maldonado to two quick outs. Two-way player in baseball, Horvath, uh, the one that we're highlighting tonight, but they have certainly made big impacts. Brendan McKay, we mentioned earlier, signs a contract with the Rays, agrees to a deal for seven million dollars. He was here this week playing for Louisville. Saw Tyler Holton do it this week for Florida State. Who I cannot wait to see that kid next year. Going to be good. Tyler Holton can really pitch. Mike Martin was here again. Eduardo's former coach at Florida State. You know, 22 times, and they have yet to win the whole thing, but they keep coming back. Get it down! Called strike, one and two. Poche retired the side in order in the fourth. He's trying to do it here in the fifth, and you can hear the LSU crowd again start to come to life. Ooh. 
couple of players, including Josh Smith down at third base, started the run off the field. They thought they had one there. Too close to take. Ball had plate. Question was, was it knee high or not? Looked like it was. Pretty good pitch. Wow. Langworthy just does not seem like he can get to a fastball on the inner side of the plate right now at all. Yep. He does have a home run in his college World Series, but he hit it as far to left, straightaway left field as you could. Off speed, and he got ahead of it. It's just a ground ball to Freeman. Freeman will lead things off. LSU once again trying to get something going. Only two hits. That's a fair ball. The Bruins have done it. They win their first ever national championship. Rip to left field. It's gone. And Vandy's victorious. It's all over. Virginia pieced together a championship. The Carolina kid makes it 4 nothing. Coastal Carolina rules the roost. They win the championship. Recent champions here in Omaha at the College World Series. And right now, Florida looking for their first. LSU looking for their seventh. Every time they have played in the championship game or series, LSU has won it. They're trying to make it seven for seven. On the ground, and what a start for Dyson to get Freeman and keep him off the bases. We're looking at Last time, 2011, we had an all-SEC championship. We got that again tonight, which makes the conference very proud. For more on that, here's Laura. All right, thank you, Carl. And here with SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. Now, Greg, when you think about the fact that we've got two SEC teams here in the College World Series Finals, what do you think it says about the strength of the league? Well, it's a tribute to the two teams and our coaches, but I think it's a compliment to the entire conference. They've played through an entire season against uh, 12 of their competitors. They've come out on top in our league and they're on top nationally and I think that just shows how they've been prepared so it's a, it's an honor really for the entire conference I think to have both LSU and Florida in this uh, championship series. You mentioned the coaches what comes to mind when you think about Paul Maneri and Kevin O'Sullivan for these two programs. Well they're incredibly thorough and you know, what they've done from a pitching standpoint and preparation of their teams um, they've won over time this is not something that's new. Uh, they're well supported uh, by their their campuses you know Joe Oliva at LSU and now Scott Strickland is the athletic director at Florida have done tremendous things and, and then they they recruit and develop talent and you, you see it and you see it through the season and tonight and what we've seen uh, in this Omaha series. All right. Thanks so much Commissioner and guys we're going to get him some snacks. OK. I think he's a little hungry. <laughs> You got a good seat tonight sitting down there in yeah. row one. That's a proud man tonight and he should be. I mean there is no we can have the debate about what's the best baseball conference and that'll go back and forth. But the reality is there isn't a league as a whole that makes more of a financial commitment to the game of college baseball than the SEC. Just top to bottom Kentucky's building a forty five million dollar stadium now. Florida discussing potentially a new stadium down there. LSU was one of the first to go all in on this thing when the new Alex Box came in. But top to bottom, the league truly has a commitment to this sport. 3 1 coming to Antoine Duplantis. 3 and 2. Well, Alex Box. We heard the story the other day. They get 9,200 season ticket holders, and the only way to have a season ticket in your hands when you don't yet have one is to have it willed to you. Duplantis strikes out there, second strikeout of the night. And Tyler Dyson's got him in a little sleeper hold right now. How many comfortable swings have you seen tonight? One. One comfortable swing. It was a line drive to the right fielder. Besides that, there hasn't been any. And and it's interesting. Two strikeouts, both on fastballs, also. Right. He's getting a lot of swings and misses on the heater. And I don't know if they're not seeing it or they're not picking it up or if Dyson has just been that good tonight, but it, it just doesn't look like, and this is a premier offense in our game right now. And Tyler Dyson has absolutely shut them down. Dykeman reached in a walk his first time up, a second time up. That one is way inside. During that at bat to Duplantis, he was missing glove side in 
I don't know if he was trying to throw in, but he missed quite a few on the glove side in. The strikeout was ball four. Right. Yeah, it was. And again, 71 pitches so far, 72 pitches in the game for Dyson. It's the most he's thrown in a game this year. Previous high was 58 against Wake Forest in the Super Regional. Center tonight. field, no. Horvath is under it. Tonight, the pop-up is a graveyard. Earlier this week, they were leaving the yard to the seats. Dykeman more frustration for LSU, five and a half in. This NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. Playing a little bit more like the traditional TD Ameritrade where the baseballs aren't flying out of the yard. So you got to put pressure on a defense. And early in this one, Florida was doing it to Nick Coombs. A couple of errors. And that allowed Florida to get on the board. J.J. Schwartz still delivering Deacon Lippitt there as he stamps emphatically on home. They got one in the first. They got one in the second. Coombs dropped the ball. And then there was the kick at third that Robertson couldn't convert for the out thanks to the speed. And then Lippitt sends one back up the middle. And that error cost him another run. A couple of unearned runs to Jared Poche. And the standing room only crowd here at TD Ameritrade is waiting for many of them. LSU to get going offensively. Tyler Dyson, the freshman, has been outstanding. Poche back on the bump for LSU. 90th pitch, 91 now, poured in for a strike. Mike Rivera, Ryan Larson, Nick Horvath. The Gators trying to win their first College World Series title. We just nine outs away once this inning concludes. Hold it up. One and two. So another guy that has been in the lineup tonight, Austin Langworthy. He's now warming up. We just saw Horvath warm up. And now Austin Langworthy does. And another hit for Rivera back up the middle. And you can tell the game plan from the Gators from the get-go. It stayed up the middle the other way against Poche. They did the same thing when they faced them in Florida. Pitch out over the plate. Don't try to do too much. That's been the difference in the game. The Gators, more of a line drive swing. For the Tigers, a lot of fly balls being hit tonight. And you know with the wind, it's not going anywhere. Eduardo, that's exactly what Craig Bell was talking to his offense about before the game with Florida. And he said, hey, do not even think about trying to hit it over the outfielders' heads. Let's just almost keep them out of the game. He said the wind's going to keep them out of the game anyway. He told them, just hit singles. He, that's literally what he said. Hit singles throughout this game. We'll have success. Yeah, that's experience, too, having been here before. There's a sacrifice. Bunt Poche will go to first with it. Covered by Freeman. And they move Rivera down to second base. And again, one of the hallmarks for Florida has been a batting average of 298 with runners on and 150 with the bases empty. Horvath, who had uh, warmed up <laughs> last inning, is now at the plate. Langworthy, who has thrown five plus innings in the postseason and is in the lineup. As a left fielder, basically just walked from left field to the bullpen and started throwing. I don't know if either one of them are going to throw. Because if Dyson comes out and gets you through seven, mm -hmm. to me it becomes Burn and Kowar's game. Yeah. Now, as you can get some runs, as you see Kevin O'Sullivan coming out to talk to Horvath, you'll get a game three tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time. And that's what LSU is really hoping for because they'll have Alex Lang, the 30th pick in this year's draft to the Chicago Cubs, and has looked spectacular. That time, here at Omaha will be on the mound. And that, if you had a game three and you're LSU, that's who you want. Feeling pretty good when that guy trots out there. Will they be able to get there? 
No one to Horvath. Jammed down the line, but fouled by a couple of feet. For a guy that came into this ball game hitting 179, Nick Horvath taking some pretty good swings tonight. Sickled in the second inning with two outs, came around to score the second run of the ball game. <laughs> that, was, that was a little bit cold. Security guy comes darting out of the bullpen, and there's a guy just reaching over with every inch he has, and he's like touching <laughs> the top of the ball. And instead of giving it to that guy, they give it to somebody who had run down from row 28. In there, called strike three for Poche. He's got two down. Can't give up on it. That curveball, your dead red fastball after turning on that pitch inside, all of a sudden, here it comes. Can't pull the trigger. Wait till he sees the replay on that one. It'll be yes. Palmineri coming out, 98 pitches for Poche. That is Zach Hess. He has been the closer. He has been Mr. Extraordinaire for LSU. And it looks like Zach Hess is charging into the game. I don't know that he's even signaled for him yet, but, but he's ready to go. Robertson's got his hand around Poche's shoulder. As Laura told us the story coming into this season was Robertson, Freeman, Poche, and Dykeman. All one of the come back after being drafted for a chance to win a championship. Now it's in the hands of Zach Hess. Is a standing ovation given to Poche. His dad last night literally saved a man's life. And the all-time winningest pitcher in LSU history walks off in Omaha for the final time. Quite a moment for the Poche family and the Tigers baseball family as well. That's a great pitch. Great pitch. Jared Poche, Troy Fullwood talked about that breaking ball, what a great pitch it was, and this was just a couple of seconds ago, the all-time winningest pitcher in LSU history. His buddy Alex Lang out there to congratulate him. Will not pick up his 40th win, but he certainly hopes that there's another night for LSU to play. They bring in Zach Hess. He's become the closer basically here in Omaha. The freshman out of Forest, Virginia at 6'6", 216. This should be fun. Throws at about 96. He's put up crazy numbers in four appearances here in Omaha. Ten strikeouts, one hit, no earned runs. And I guess of him, this is about controlling emotions as well. I think it absolutely is. Was recruited by both of these schools, ultimately chose to go to LSU. And for Zach Kess, has been virtually unhittable in this College World Series. Three saves already. And no surprise that he's in right now. If you're LSU, you cannot let this league go any larger than it is. One one. Oh, the closer prior to Hess, Hunter Newman pitched last night and pitched very well. Two and a third inning, a hit and no runs. Misses with a breaking ball, two and one. That's that guy, you've probably seen it on our telecast or on SportsCenter. He's got the wild thing hairstyle in the back of his head. You can see it there. Once he was put into that closures role, he really embraced it and uh, fit right in with the Ricky Vaughn wild thing thing. <laughs> on the corner, he gets the call to even it up at two and two. Tough to hit. Your beak and whip it. Both the fastball and that slider. That one looked off the plate. Uh, you have to be able to take those right there. Now you have to battle, open up the zone. Tough to do against Hess. College sports fans know the NCAA basketball official, Carl Hess. That's Zach Hess's Time dad. Time to go.
was a hard one. 96 and down. But a nice piece of hitting by Lippett. He understands mm -hmm. where Fullwood has made those calls. Outside he goes and does not allow him to make the call for him. Battling that pitch. Well executed on both sides. Two down, you get Rivera who singled. He's at second base after a sacrifice. They had runners on in every inning but the fourth and the fifth, and lots of them. Gone is Lippitt. Good job by Hess. He showed you just about everything there. 83 mile an hour hook. 96 mile an hour fastball. Feeling the emotions in his final game on the mound. Jared Poche of LSU. Feels like Fajardo and Singer have got him here. Dyson has picked up the baton and just taken it with him as we take a pause for tonight's game track brought to you by Buick. LSU's got those three errors. The statistic going in was six and ten. Any team that has made at least one error. They made three remarkably. They're only down two nothing. Florida two for eleven with runners in scoring position and eight men left on base. And they're winning. Yep. What's going to take the bigger bite, the errors or the men left on base? Zach Watson leads things off, and the first pitch is in there for a strike. Dyson has done a dynamite job getting ahead of the LSU hitters. And his story is growing with each passing inning. The freshman who hasn't started but a couple of games in his career. Anointed as sort of the next in the long line of great Gator pitchers. He has certainly lived up to it here. We're in the seventh inning. Florida wins. They take home the title. LSU trying to force a winner take all game three. And we're getting closer and closer to Michael Byrne out of that bullpen. Slow roller. Great speed. That's going to be a hit. No Man, doubt about it. Run. No doubt Man, about it. Can he run? <laughs> And on that swing and bun, he's getting out of the box a little bit quicker, too. But it's it's like a running start for Watson, who really doesn't need that because the speed is good enough already. And a good pitch, too. Watson beats it out. And now you get all sorts of speed on the base pass with a slow delivery time to home plate. Wise decision also by India. Just put it in your back pocket. Watson 11 of 16 when it comes to... Stolen bases and base attempts. Two of the three singles that they have tonight have been infield hits. Josh Smith, the third baseman, laced one to right center, got thrown out last night, trying to stretch it to a double. Michael Byrne up and throwing. Don't be surprised if you see a hit and run here. You got a guy who can fly on first base. I know you're down two runs, but that, that's the style that's got him to this point. Michael Byrne's got 19 saves. He's been the stopper for the Gators all year. Now, a meeting on the mound. This is prototypical of Mike Rivera. Every time it goes 2 0. He goes to the mound, and here comes Kevin O'Sullivan also to talk to his young hurler. I think that's it. I think you take him out right now. You got a guy in the bullpen with 19 saves, and I know that, that he was in the ball game last night. But Byrne, excuse me, Dyson has pitched you into the seventh inning. He got a two-run lead. Yeah, we're going to make the move. And the Gator fans that are here, and the Gators on the bench, you've got to give the freshman. From Florida by way of Massachusetts. A rousing ovation. Way to burst on the scene if you're Tyler Dyson, and now he'll get a chance to watch Byrne and Company to see if they can close it out and get him a title. Well, 
Welcome back to Omaha TD Ameritrade. The NCAA College World Series is being presented by Capital One. Look from the left field line. Tyler Dyson was just nails tonight for Florida. Is this guy had one start the whole season. One start. The longest out of the year was five innings out of the bullpen against Wake Forest in the Super Regional. And the freshman, the stuff was outstanding against a very, very good offense, and he made him look very average tonight. Dyson works into the seventh inning and now gives way to Michael Byrne. Six plus, no earned runs. Two walks, two Ks. Think about Florida. You want to look ahead to next season, you're looking at it right there. Singer and Dyson. And out of the present, and Michael Byrne. And he's coming in with a 2-0 count. The first pitch is a huge pitch to Josh Smith. Zach Watson at first. 19 saves. Tremendous numbers across the board. Smith got a hit off Byrne in the eighth last night. That one is ripped, but it's into the seats. Foul. And it goes to 2-1. and one. situation in the eighth last night when Smith hit one to right center Horvath cut it off threw him out going to second base you have to think line drive if you're the hitter forget about trying to launch here now if you're going to go deep it's cutting through that wind anything elevated that wind will knock it down eye on the speedy base runner at first in Watson. Burns story is an interesting one too. A walk on. They really hadn't identified a closer. And as they shuffled the cards they landed on Burn. And man did he make it his position. You know for a coach there's nothing better than a security blanket at the back end Woo! down to second base on a called okay. strike. Two and two. Watson into scoring position. Well, they guessed right, and that's why the reaction, you saw the reaction from Mike Rivera. You guessed right on a 2-1 breaking ball. There is no chance of Rivera throwing anybody out there. The LSU fans in the outfield, especially right, all standing and cheering. This College World Series has been defined by the bottoms of the orders. They've been great. Let's not forget how Zach Watson got on. On a slider, he rolled one down the third baseline like a swinging bunt. Tigers looking for their first hit with a runner on. They're 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. Does have the feeling like something's going to happen. Into right field, and it is down, and the dive, it gets by him. Here comes Watson, he's in. Double for Smith, two to one. Ill advised dive out there, and right field from Larson had it go by him. Well, we talked about taking advantage of mistakes. Saw the Gators do it to LSU early. Now, LSU doing it to the Gators. You cannot dive right here. You have to know the situation. The tying rim is at the plate. You cannot make that play. You play it on the bounce, and you keep the runner at first base. LSU taking advantage of it, and this stadium right now is rocking. You're ahead. You are. You're ahead. Nobody out for Jake Slaughter. 
Came in as a replacement in the fourth inning. He's got a couple of sack bunts. He looks ready to do that again. And foul, foul, did it foul. hit him? No, I thought it might have hit him in, in fair territory, but it looked like it just spun foul. It's a risk for Slaughter. He's hanging around that batter's box. You got to get out of there. Uh, he almost put that right hand. Almost thought about catching for a second. How about Rivera, too, to avoid getting hit by it in fair territory? Very unorthodox here also. LSU, the visiting team. Playing for that tie. Paul Maneri knows and understands the situation right now when it comes to the Gators and their pitching. And the guy that he has on the mound. He's got his closer in the ball game. I think you'd take a tie ball game right now. Starting pitchers, Fiedo, Dyson. Nothing they can do right now. And LSU has got a run in the seventh. Nobody out. You do the bunt again here. Maneri and Slaughter are talking with each other. I let him swing away here. I mean, analytics even tell you that with no outs, runner at second base, odds are greater that that run from second will score. They'd be swinging, swing away, and here comes the rain. Eddie goes to the cell phone quickly to check the weather. Smith has got very good speed at second base. Now you understand why it's been referred to as uh, Baton Rouge North. First time tonight they've had something to cheer about. Good take. He's going to have to take that one a few more times. Both closers in the game were in the seventh inning. Florida wins, they take home the title. LSU can force a game three and have the ace of their staff getting the ball in Alex Lang. One, two, into left field. Smith being held up. First and third, nobody out there. Hitting Michael Byrne. Well, that curveball doesn't have the same action as it did yesterday, and this is what happens when you get a good look at it. Right in that 5-6 hole. Good hold at third base. No outs. LSU starting to believe. In the pitch before that, he took the one that Byrne wanted him to swing at. Forced Byrne back into the zone. That one hung up. Slaughter put a good swing on it. And an offense that did not have many signs of life for the for the first six innings now looks totally different here in the seventh. Three hits in the inning. They had two entering the seventh. First baseman Schwartz right here. Ground ball. Have to go home with it. Middle plane double play deck. Michael Papirski. The eight hole hitter. Swing and a miss. The junior out of Lamont, Illinois, has homered from both sides of the plate in the same game. No one has ever done that before. He's also hit another one with three home runs at the College World Series. Home runs are real hard to come by tonight, but anything to the outfield will tie the game up. On the 
ground to second. The game's going to get tied. Take out of Guthrie there. He's out. We may have to send the base runner back to third base because of a runner interference wow. on the fielder. Wow, wow, wow. This is the only way that a run could not score on this play. He went hard into Guthrie. Now the question's going to be, you're trying to break up the double play. Did he do it on purpose? Did he slide late? But it sends the runner back to third base in Smith. What a turn of events. Watch if he leaves the base paths. He's going to say right he attempted call. to right kick call. him. It's the right call. It's the right call, guys. The rule is you can go in hard, but you have to go directly into second base. At no time was he trying to hit the bag. It's 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 the right call, and it's Paul Maneri is going to be furious because it takes a run off the board. But I think it is the correct call. Steve Mattingly was staring at the base and the slide and the leg of Guthrie. I know Slaughter's trying to be aggressive, but man, you got to know the situation right there. You just have to know the situation. You like you slide straight in, straight in. It's it's a tie ball game. I think we've seen more egregious plays at second base. There's no doubt about it. But I, I don't do. disagree with that. Yeah. But the way that the rule is written, yep. that is the correct call. The run had basically scored at this point. And look at Mattingly right away. The second base up says time out. No hesitation whatsoever. That's perfect. Well, and I mean, the rule is pretty straightforward. The runner must slide onto the ground before the base in a direct line between the two bases. So in this case, a direct line between first and second. You can slide through the base if you would like. Come on now. This is brutal. Yeah, the LSU crowd is upset, and uh, there are a variety of things being thrown out of the field. I wouldn't suggest that it's only LSU people that are doing it. How about Slaughter had come through with the big hit, then he gets nailed for that slide. And instead of a 2 2 game, you got two outs in the top of the seventh and a 2 1 game. Wow. Well, and you give Michael Byrne new life. You give the whole Florida team a new life. Yeah. This game's tied, and you get your closer in there, and you have a whole decision that you're thinking about in the back of your mind about tomorrow night, and you want to start Jackson Coar, and you've already thought maybe he's going to be in the game tonight. They still have the tying run 90 feet away, but what a huge break for Florida. Jordan has been the eighth and now ninth hole hitter. Still waiting for the field to be cleared here. That'll be the defining play of this game if it ends with Florida somehow winning a title. Byrne has thrown only one wild pitch this season. Jordan, you have to look for something up. So far, he's been making mistakes with that curveball. Good swing. Okay. Two strikes, likely a slider, but if it gets by Rivera, you got a tie game as well. This one's up the middle, on a line, caught in center field. And look at the emotion from Horvath. 
about the hardest hit ball LSU has had tonight. And what a way to end a very frustrating inning for the Tigers. They had the tying run touching home right about now, but interference called on Jake Slaughter. Sends Smith back to third, and Byrne gets out of it. Still plenty to play here at the College World Series, game two. Well, we're all taking a little breath after what just happened. Bottom of the seventh, Florida up two to one over LSU. And the first pitch from the closer, Zach Hess, who came in in the last half. Inside, wild interference call. Jackson Coar, who very well could be starting for them in game three, is up throwing now. As Florida senses they can end it and win their first College World Series championship. Sky high on the infield. Smith makes the play. The protecting of the middle infielder has certainly been a point of emphasis at every level. And as Kyle has pointed out, that's something that you pay very close attention to at the collegiate level. I mean, you can agree or disagree with whether or not the rule should be what it was, but the rule says you got to go straight into the base, and he didn't go straight into the base. It's that rule's been around for a long time. Absolutely. So. I mean, before you couldn't go through the base. Now you can actually, I mean, you can at least go through the base. So if a second baseman, a shortstop is just hanging out there, you, you can't technically take him out. You just have to go directly through the base. J.J. Schwartz, Nelson Maldonado. They finally got a run at LSU. They nearly tied it. Good fastball at 95 right on the inside corner. Power on power here. Him a slider and a little roller back to Hess. Fires over to first, and he's been very effective since he's come in. Quickly two down. We'll add to the lure of the College World Series a play like that. Going after your seventh College World Series championship. And another team going after the first. The game would have been tied were it not for an interference call. Nelson Maldonado, the designated hitter, a sacrifice, a single, and he flew out to center field. Does Burn come back if you're coaching Florida in the eighth inning? I think he does come back. But Kowar clearly is warming up to get ready to come into this game if there are any problems. I mean, this is when you're, you're pushing all your chips in the middle right here. You're all in. Absolutely. You already have them warming up. Now, the question is, does Kevin O'Sullivan want Kowar to start a clean inning? I think he does. I just think he would prefer it to be in the ninth inning instead instead of the eighth inning right now. That's got a little wild there. Four balls to Maldonado, so he heads down to first base. As Coar warms you. Look at his tournament numbers. One and one, an ERA of 6-6. Six, six. Three games started in three appearances, so he did not come out of the bullpen. But over the course of the season, 12 and one, 415 ERA. And he started 18 games. Did not pitch in relief. A little backdoor slider on the inside to get ahead 0-1 to Jonathan India. 
26,607, the fifth highest attendance at TD Ameritrade since it opened in 2011. 26,607. One and one. I'm sure many of them are having conversations amongst themselves. So what did we just say? What happened? Took something off of it. And it's heading towards the dugout, and it'll get it just over it. Story of the night for Florida has been missed opportunities, especially in the first three innings. As a result, only two runs. And for LSU, it was just an inability to hit. Tyler Dyson, great starter for Florida. 1-2 to India, but first a pickoff, and they nailed him. Nelson Maldonado. A big break, and LSU's got life again. Alan, Dan saw, Alan Dunn saw this one. Pitch before, Maldonado doing the same thing. This time they pick and get a gimme over at first. Tigers still trail it by one. Welcome back, everyone. Seventh inning play of the game, maybe the play of the series. Jake Slaughter slides into Dalton Guthrie. They call interference, and as a result, the base runner who was at third and had already scored what would have been the tying run has to go back to third base. Slaughter did appear to slide out of the baseline and go right for, unfortunately, the knee of Guthrie. They made that call right away. And the rule, for those of you that don't have a rule book, Andy, any force play, runner must slide on the ground between the base and in a direct line between the two bases. Interference called if the runner slides out of the baseline in the direction of the fielder and alters the play of the fielder. And there is no doubt that is what happened by the letter of the rule. What you didn't see is that Paul Maneri did go over to Jake Slaughter and, and let him know that he had made a mistake. So Burns starts the eighth. Robertson has struggled again tonight. He had one game when he went three for three with a walk. He reached base all four times. But other than that, it has not been a good College World Series for Kramer Robertson. And he's the fire starter, and now behind one and two with Freeman on deck. Top of the order, bats in the eighth. Oh, nobody picked the ball up. It ran along the wall, and nobody got it. Disappointment. Oh. Robertson, frustration. yeah, and frustration. Fouls went into the seats. Well, this is where Robertson has to forget about all the previous at-bats in the College World Series and focus right now here in this 1-2 count. Any which way to get on base. Pitches inside, just wear it, whatever it takes. Two and two. Robertson made the final out in last night's game one, a 4-3 victory for Florida. And another one-run game. Anybody surprised given the two SEC co-champions? No. Not one bit. Two phenomenal efforts by the starters tonight. Jared Poche hurt by his defense. Three errors. Robertson a little bleeder to second base and the dive of Lippitt can't get there. A little bleeder and LSU's get the leadoff man on. That's all it takes. Last inning it was Zach Watson with a swing and bunt. This time fighting off this fastball on the inside part. Just getting enough. To get it right past Lippitt at second base. Hope staying alive for the Tigers.
Guys, you saw Kramer Robertson just saying right there, we'll take it, we'll take it. And before this inning in the LSU dugout, the message was move on, move on past the frustration of this game so far. Paul Maneri said it many times, the eighth inning has been good to us. A lot of guys saying this eighth inning is ours. Let's go out and take it. 43-13, Florida. Drive your point home. They have outscored the opponent, 43-13. to Speed on the bases and speed at the plate and Cole Freeman. That ball gets by Rivera and goes all the way to the backstop. Robertson a big turn and wisely, wisely puts the brakes on. What a nice job by Jonathan India, the third baseman. Aggressively going after that ball right there. If you're wondering why Mike Rivera didn't get in front of it, well, it's the fastball. Watch him right here, squaring up the butt. Ball in the dirt, Rivera doesn't pick it up and you see India aggressively sliding, making a nice play, keeping Robertson at second base. Once again, LSU runner in scoring position, trying to tie this one up. Jackson Coar, who is the likely game three starter, is throwing hard in that bullpen. Now he stops to watch Byrne and Freeman. Now you're in a pickle. If you're Kevin O'Sullivan, because this game gets tied, I, I don't think you can put Kowar in the game. Freeman squares, lays it down. Burn. Safe. Safe! The speed of Freeman beats it out. And think, now LSU's in big time business. Think of what the speed of Watson and the speed of Freeman has meant in the last two innings for LSU. For Watson, he beats out a swinging bunt, ends up on first base, comes around to score the first run of the ball game, and this time on what is a sacrifice bunt. You got a stretch there of your lip, but you can't wait for that baseball to get to you. He's waiting for that baseball to get to you. He's got that left foot on the bag. Keith Jones making the right call. LSU has not hit the ball hard. Infield hits, a blooper for Robertson, a bunt that ended up the speed of Freeman with him on first. And you can do all sorts of things now with Duplantis up and the speed at first and third. <laughs> Loud foul. They've been pitching to Plantis in most of the game tonight. First pitch breaking ball in. Gets the bat head out. I think Cole Freeman's aware of not to slide into second base at a potential double play other than directly to the bag. That's the first base coach's job to be able to tell him. Last time, it was also his job to tell him. Mm. Burn bearing down ahead 0-2. LSU Tigers who are trying to rally right now. That was predictable. What, the boo? The boo. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely the boo. <laughs> Not a great deal of objectivity <laughs> at TD Ameritrade right now. He plant just the sophomore. Batting in the three hole. Quiet kid. As we mentioned, comes from a very athletic family that has competed at the highest level. A dad 
who is a member of an Olympic team as an alternate, a mom who is a heptathlete, younger brother who has set a world junior record in the pole vault. Swings and misses, and he's gone in a huge strikeout for Byrne. I think that's the first change that Byrne threw in this ballgame right there. Everything else has been fastball, breaking ball, fastball, breaking ball, and the spot in this ball game where you absolutely need a strikeout if you get to two strikes. Burn throws a really good changeup. Arm speed was good. It's off the plate. Had big time sink. The planters couldn't hold up. Swung right through it. And now that will get Jackson Kowar throwing again. If they were playing for the tie in the seventh, why wouldn't they have that drag bunt to first to play for the tie in the eighth? With the planters, you mean safety right there? Whoever, yeah. If we did it once in the seventh, why aren't they doing it again? This is fascinating right now. Because if you want your best chance to get out of this thing without giving up any runs, it's that guy warming up in the bullpen right now. And he's signaled to him already. We are all in. <laughs> we are. Everybody push the chips to the middle. This is the guy that was supposed to start game three for Florida if there was going to be a game three. And now he's going to come on in with one out in the eighth inning. Open up the door for anything to happen tomorrow night. But you worry about that tomorrow. You could win a championship tonight. You bring in Jackson Kowar to face the number four hitter, Greg Dykeman. When we come back to the College World Series in the top of the eighth inning. Well, the score is Florida 2, LSU 1. If Florida wins the game, they win the College World Series. If LSU does, they force a game three, and they'll have their ace, Alex Lang, on the mound for game three. Who will Florida pitch? Well, the guy that was on the mound right now is the one they were going to go to. <laughs> so great. as Kyle has kept saying, all the chips are in here, and you can see the wheels turning on both sides. Listen, you got one of the most dangerous hitters in the entire country coming up. You got a one-run lead, and Jackson Kowar, less than a week ago, Looked like a major league starter for about eight eight hitters. You look for That's about right all here. you need him for here. Absolutely. And this guy gives you the best chance to strike out Dykeman right now. For Kowar, just a sophomore draft eligible next year, but the stuff is real stuff. It's mid-90s fastball, big-time breaking ball. And we saw it on display early in his previous appearance here at the College World Series. He was great the first time through the order, then got a little bit shaky after that. This is the big question mark. 18 appearances, 18 games started. Right. He's inheriting runners right now at the corner, on the corner. So he has to focus on that hitter and forget about pacing yourself. It's about getting that strikeout. 31st overall appearance of his career. Seventh in relief and the first time he's been a relief pitcher since April of 2016. Guys, just a reminder, Kevin O'Sullivan said it was Jackson Kowar's idea to potentially go to him in this game. He wanted the ball right here. I would love right now Cole Freeman to take a, a fake steal, a couple steps to see if they're going to throw through, if the Gators are going to throw through or not. The middle infielders will let you know. They'll stay still or, or they'll stay in position or not. That way you can steal second on this situation. Freeman, 19 steals in 26 attempts. Jackson Kowar to Greg Dykeman, a cleanup hitter for the Tigers. He goes. Dykeman on the ground. They'll come home with it. Rivera tags Robertson. He's out at home. What a play by J.J. Schwartz and Mike Rivera, two veterans for Florida, as they cut down the would-be tying run. There was no hesitation about J.J. Schwartz right there making that play home plate. Now plate Sees it coming right at him. Plays at the plate can be reviewed. And Robertson, did he get his hand in before the tag? Doesn't look like it, at least at first glance. This will be a much better view. He's out. He's out. No, he's out. That's a great play by J.J. Schwartz. It is. Holding the base runner on, got off there far enough so he could make that play. Had to stretch all the way backhand, but there was zero hesitation in it. And 
Freeman was going on that pitch also. No opportunity to get a double play right there on contact. Robertson was going. And if he hesitates at all, he's safe. Yeah. So they'll take a look at it. You've seen it at home. It shouldn't take very long. It shouldn't, but I'm glad that they are taking a look yep. at it. This is why we have it right here. Troy Fullwood's been good all night right on top of it. I think this one will be pretty quick. And it was quick. We'll see the ruling, whether it's been confirmed or overturned on the out at home. Out at home, Koar is one out away from getting out of this eighth inning. And just think about what chances LSU has had in the seventh and the eighth inning. Interference sent the tying run back to third here with a runner at third and one out, a ground out, and the out at home. Now Zach Watson, look at the numbers in the College World Series 360 and tremendous, tremendous speed at second base in Cole Freeman. Oh, no, no, no. 97. A little adrenaline going here? Mm-hmm. It's a little different when you don't have to go seven. <laughs> Center field line shot. That'll do it. Jackson Coar comes in, gets the two huge outs. LSU frustrated again. And this time it was great defense. J.J. Schwartz throws it to his catcher, and that's the end result of Robertson being tagged out. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Welcome back, everyone. Carl Ravitch, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Laura Rutledge. Florida and LSU are putting on a show with some incredibly memorable plays. Interference play in the seventh brings the tying run back to third. They had a chance, first and third, nobody out. Strikeout, fielder's choice here. Go! Boom! Robertson, we got a boom from <laughs> Troy Fullwood. On a play at the plate, so we now begin the bottom of the eighth inning. Pitching decisions that Kevin O'Sullivan have made have paid off to this point. He's got nothing showing for a game three if they ever get there, but boy, has he put himself in ideal position to close it tonight with Jackson Coar on the mound. They know who they would face tomorrow. Alex Lang. If it gets to that point, it's Alex Lang on the mound for LSU. And I think the thought is we got a better chance to win this one. Well done there. That's a fair ball. India down the line. He heads for second. This may be a play, but he dives in safely. Jonathan India with a big leadoff double for the Gators. The thought is if we got the lead in this one, we got a better chance here than going toe to toe with Alex Lang tomorrow. And Jonathan Indians trying to extend that lead right here. This is what Joe Madden. From the Cubs calls, go after the jugular, the jug runs, add on runs. India's got two hits tonight. Paul Maneri comes out to talk to his freshman closer. Jack Hess came on in the sixth inning, guys. Sports Center will follow us. They'll have the entire day in the world of sports. John Butcher Ross, Kenny Main watching this one. Better believe they're back there asking similar questions. And many are here. The interference play thrown out at home. First and third, nobody out for LSU. They played for the tie earlier. They didn't do it there. They end up getting no runs.
Florida has burned through basically every arm that they have. And now, likely see Langworthy try again to lay a bunt down, I would assume. He's going to try. He struggled the first time he tried to do it. Ended up with a ground ball to the right side, which did advance the runner. Yeah, his approach last time was not too good. Didn't look too confident getting the bunt down. This time you have to just bunt to third base. Oh. Did he go? Well, he went there. The LSU crowd is letting Greg Street hear it down there at third base. They appealed it whether he had committed to the bunt. Well, he committed big oh, yeah, time right there. Absolutely did. Sure did. Wow. That's a bad call. Now it changes up a little bit. Lefty hitter at the plate. He's seen the approach. You, hit, you get a break right here, 2-0 count. Time to let it go. Swing away, try to get something you can pull. If Florida can win this one, they will win the College World Series championship. If not, LSU would be in a big-time driver's seat with their ace on the mound in a game three. Gators in their third College World Series finals. They're looking for their first title. LSU's got a half dozen of those. He's telling them the bun again. 3-0. Oh. That was a full take. Yeah. I think you're doing has a favor right now if you bunt. He's been taxed a lot during this College World Series, and he came on with maximum adrenaline, got got him out of a jam, but it, it just it seems like the stuff is starting to tick down a little bit right now. One. He got a good fastball to hit, but he squared to bunt and fouls it off, and now 3-2. It's the fundamentals that have really been, they've been brutal. Let's be, let's be straight up here. Uh, you have to be able to get the bunt down, and I guarantee you this is going to be emphasis next year for both programs. Well, you would think. Again, we talked about it, and uh, I do believe they practice it. They just don't put it into practice very often. But a 3-2, and he walked him. Just wonder about LSU's resilience and just how hard it's going to be to bounce back from the call in the seventh and then the thrown out at home. You can see it on the face of the fans and their coach. Well, at this point, they just got to try to get back in the dugout of a one run game yep. because Florida with two on, nobody out. Mike Rivera has been terrific for Florida. In these situations, getting the bat on the ball, he was intentionally walked in the third inning. Oh, oh. Tough pitch to bunt because Hess's ball moved so yeah. much. That one got Papierski off the foul ball. Well, the fundamentals are right there. The only thing is he went after a pitch up in the zone. Anything over your bat head, you just have to pull that bat back. Here we go. He was fortunate oh, he didn't pop that one up. Wow. Jackson Kowar now pitcher of record for Florida, and they're trying to get him some insurance runs here in the bottom of the eighth with nobody out. He got it down, and he did it well. They get the out, and they move the runners up. There is a guy you could very well see at the next level just because of the fundamentals and how good he is around the plate and his ability to put a bat on the ball. You think about some great backup catchers at the major league level. And none no bigger and more popular right now than David Ross, former Gator himself, as Rivera gets some high fives back to that dugout. Christian Hicks will pinch hit here. 
to get the left hand there in there to face Hess. We've seen plenty of action in this College World Series already. Horvath started defensively today. Maldonado DH, which pushed Hicks out of the lineup. And he won't get a chance to swing the bat. Yep. He's appeared in 63 games, Hicks, with a 282 average. So they'll load him up, get the force everywhere. And Nick Horvath, the number nine hitter, delivered a hit and scored a run in the second inning. We'll have a little conversation with Kevin O'Sullivan in the batter's box right now. What do you think the suggestions are being made to him are? I think part of it is I think you, you really have to force Hess into the zone. I mean, you can tell there's some fatigue there, and it's understandable there's some fatigue there. I'll tell you another thing, and Coach O'Sullivan, attention to detail all around. On that bunt right there, Hess did not get out of the mound quickly. Long legs. Don't be surprised. Even with the bases loaded, you try to steal another run here with a well-executed bunt. Pinch runners going in. That's Andrew Baker. He'll go to first base. Hicks will come out. Langworthy comes up. Now we should say Horvath comes up. Horvath has been asked to sacrifice and has done it successfully one time. Up tight on the plate against Hess with the bases loaded. I almost hit him. Look out. That got him. There you go. There's that hit by pitch. And it brings in the fourth run. Papirski is asking Fullwood if he leaned into it or didn't get out of the way. But the Gators get big insurance. And I he stood right on the plate. I don't think he leaned in. I, thought no. he, I think he thought it was a fastball that was going to hit him. And it ended up a breaking ball that just comes back over the plate. That reaction looked like he was. Oh, he stayed know. in there. He stayed in there. Yeah, that, that on second look, I think you're right, Eddie. I mean, he didn't lean into it, but he definitely, he wasn't in any big hurry to get out of the way. I thought his first reaction was he thought it was a fastball, but the replay looked a little different. Three to one, Gators trying to win their first College World Series. Lip it with the bases loaded. Laces one in the center field, and that'll score one run. Here comes the second. The throw is not in time. Deacon Lippitt makes it 5-1, Florida. Talk about going for the jugular. The Florida Gators have opened this up. Big hit right up the middle for Deacon Lippitt. And that's been, that's been the MO of the Florida Gators, everything up the middle. The approach has been dead on since the first pitch of the game. Huge hit for Deacon Lippitt, the sophomore. Delivers two runs. Langworthy and Baker, LSU fans begin to head for the exits. And the pitch to Guthrie is in there for a strike. Everything Kevin O'Sullivan did, all the gambles with the pitching staff. Looks like they're going to pay off for him. With Jackson Coar, one of their premier pitchers on the mound for the top of the ninth and at least a four run lead. Popped up and out of play. Deacon Lippitt, two for five, three RBIs in a run. And one of the things the Gators hadn't been able to do early in the game is to deliver a hit with runners on or runners in scoring position. A 
close this game was. Again, seventh mm -hmm. inning. LSU, runner at third, runner at first. Round ball, double play ball, interference called on the base runner. The runner from third has to go back to third base after scoring the apparent tying run. Eighth inning, first and third, nobody out. They can't score the tying run, and now they're down by four. Time is out. And you certainly understand, guys, the dependence on Zach Hess. But you certainly understand why the tank is running on empty. Got three on the ground. That one gets through. And the bases are loaded with Gators. Dalton Guthrie, two hits tonight. Florida won two of three during the regular season. They won game one, obviously, and here they are looking to put game two in the books. Make it four out of five against the LSU Tigers this season, and this one would get them a College World Series championship. Schwartz, center field, deep. Watson to his right, makes the play. He'll throw it back in. Six run for Florida, scores, and they get a five-run lead. For all intents and purposes, it feels like the suspense in this one has been taken out of the building. For all of the chances that Florida had in the first three innings, don't let push two runs across to come back in this eighth inning against a guy that has looked most of the time since he's been out there unhittable yep. in this College World Series. This is pretty impressive. Yeah, I just this is not the same guy given how many innings and pitches he's had to throw. Oh, he's taxed right now, and it's been a brilliant effort that he's done during this College World Series. Maldonado, center field. Watson going out. Now charges in, and he makes the play, and that will do it. But what a huge inning for the Gators of Florida. It was 2-1 to one when the inning started. It's now six to one, and they're three outs away from their first College World Series title. This style of play that we've had this year, you know, not everyone loves that. You know, maybe not hitting as many long balls as everyone likes to see. That's fine that they can say that. I mean, they can say whatever they want about us. We're a gritty bunch. We get a lot of contributions from a lot of different people. That's why I think we're so good. You know, if we're down one, here we're down four or whatever, we always try to fight back to win. We've been through so much adversity and we fought through it and we, we just have a lot of heart. We've proved a lot of doubters wrong so far. Now we're here, so thanks to those people who said that. Mac Rivera, the catcher, Kevin O'Sullivan, looking for his first World Series title. He's made six appearances here. The Gators have been here double-digit times. They've never left the champion. But right now, they are certainly knocking on that door. Up six to one in the ninth with four big runs in the bottom of the eighth. You cannot overlook or overstate the performance of the freshman Tyler mm -hmm. Dyson for the Gators. And you're looking at this guy, Jackson Coar, Tyler Dyson, and Brady Singer coming back next year for them. Left field on a line, stays up, one down, they're two away. Time now to take a look at tonight's Capital One player of the game, and it is indeed Tyler Dyson who gives you a career-high six innings, and he kept LSU completely off balance. Second start of the year. Of Second the year. start of the year, and you go out to the mound knowing you get a chance to win a national title. Tyler Dyson did his part tonight, that is for sure. Tyler Dyson burned the closer, Coar the starter. That was the formula tonight. Last night, it was Singer to burn. Brady Singer struck out 12 LSU Tigers, which was a College World Series Finals record. Chris Reed, pinch hits, first pitch, strike. He 
into center field and Chris Reed in Omaha at the College World Series pinch hits and delivers a single. Come in and pitch run for Reed here. Michael Papierski bats. The College World Series tournament that was dominated by the offense with the 23 home runs the first time tonight. We see the wind blowing in and the pitchers enjoyed that. There were some balls hit tonight that on the other nights very likely would have uh, gone out of the ballpark, but all of them were kept in play tonight. Kind of reverted back to what we have seen in years past the TD Ameritrade where clutch hitting some singles and power pitching wins games. Rowe goes down to second base. Kapierski down 0 and 2. Special coming out of the pen. That rotation is going to be decent next year. Singer, Coar, Dyson, go get them. Awfully impressive. Awfully impressive. And they can turn pitchers into pros, that's for sure. Fiedo, the 18th pick overall in this year's draft. If the Tigers were more competitive and got to the postseason, that could have been another Brandon Finnegan situation. His stuff. Feels like it could play if it needed to at the next level. Seen a bunch of those guys, not only on these two teams, but all the teams that participated this year. Slow roll at a short. Guthrie. One out away. Paul, you said it early on. It's about pitching, defense, and base running, and that's why the Gators are where they're at, and that's why the Tigers tonight are where they're at. Lack of defense early on in the game, the base running at second base cost them. One out away. Now, Paul Maneri had said earlier this week, and I don't think he was saying it, in any way other than a compliment that he was surprised that Florida and O'Sullivan hadn't won a World Series before because of the talent that has come through the system. This could do it on the ground to second. And the Gators get their first College World Series championship. And they dogpile at the mound at TD Ameritrade. man tonight yep now goes out to celebrate with his players but Kevin O'Sullivan pulled all the right levers in the way he used his arms and all the chips were on the table man and he comes away with his first championship and the first for Florida for a guy that has never won a national title it may be the most important decision that he's ever had in the dugout he absolutely went all in said I'm going to put my best guy out there we got a one run lead and it gives us the best chance to win this whole thing he made those guys in the dugout believe absolutely he did and he did it by going as you said all in the players themselves going up to him and saying I want in and he believed in them. And those seniors that all decided to come back, and in the case of Dykeman the junior, their dream dies on this play as Deacon Lippett throws out Bo Jordan. A 
And perhaps it's been the experiences that they've had in the past where O'Sullivan has witnessed the way that others have managed it. You get to that bridge, and the question is, is it going to hold us, or do we just stay on one side? And in this case, he opted to walk across it by using the pitchers that he was considering using to start game three, and they get a win. Here's Laura. All right, thank you, Carl. Coach, you've said it means so much to you to watch this team jump over the dugout railing after a win. Tonight they do it and dogpile to win Florida's first ever national championship. What was it like watching that? You know, I'm just so happy for our players. You know, it, it, you know, it's all about them. They're the ones who put in all the hard work. I'm so happy for, for Craig, Brad, and Lars and all of our staff back at home watching our fans. And we always knew there was always going to be one first team. And I'm just happy for these guys. They were able to you know, pull it off tonight. You roll the dice, end up bringing in Jackson Coar in the eighth inning. Tyler Dyson starts this game. He's only had two starts in his career. How did that end up working out for you? Well, Tyler did an, an amazing job for us against, you know, arguably one of the best lineups in the country, and they're older. And, um, you know, I thought about bringing in Jackson to start the eighth where he had him hot, but, um, you know, just flip a coin, and we ran Burn back out there, and they got the bloop right, in the, right beyond Deacon's glove there, and... And then a bump play, we kind of, you know, kind of messed up there. So they first and third, nobody out. And it was, at that point, it was, it was either do or die for us to try to figure it out. And JJ makes a great play and throws the ball home. And we get it out there. And it's just a gritty group. That's all, it's, you know, that's all I could say. You know, there's, there's other teams that may be bigger and stronger. And our starting pitch has carried us the whole, whole year. But we got some timely hits and just a really, really gritty group. Some emotion from you as you were hugging your players right there. Why is this emotional for you? Well, I'm, you know, I'm just so happy for them, you know, and, you know, no one believed in us and usually, you know, usually we go into this thing and, you know, we're not the underdog and um, we kind of took that that on as the, as the tournament went on. I don't think any anybody thought we would get to this point and um, we had our struggles throughout the year offensively and um, I think at mid-March we're about 2.30 as a team, but they kept working and believing and, and and I told them before the season started that, that, that we had what it took, the ingredients, to, to pull this thing off. And I'm just really, really happy for them. And that's where the excitement comes from. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Laura. Ten years at the helm of the Gators baseball program. Just recently got a huge ten-year contract. May build a new stadium there shortly. And now they get their first College World Series championship. He talked about the pitching and how it's carried him. And that dude right there, Alex Fajardo, the College World Series most outstanding player. 2-0 and in 14 in the third. He gave up no runs. And he struck out 22. And the cupboard is still full as he's going to exit stage left for a professional career. And someday you'll see him wearing a Detroit Tigers uniform unless he gets traded. They get Coar, They get Singer. They get Dyson. They're full. With Kyle Peterson... Eduardo Perez, Laura Rutledge, and our entire fantastic crew at the College World Series. I'm Carl Ravitch. We'll be back for some more postgame, but now it's time to turn it back. Grabbing the emotion so we've got the team. Omaha in the College World Series. Game two. It feels right. It feels right, and it looks right. Check it out. Omaha, the nation's heartland TD Ameritrade, is our NCAA College World Series on ESPN, presented by... Capital One. Another sellout crowd, much of it wearing purple and gold for LSU. The Gators, though, they're the team that could win a championship tonight in this best two of three. They take game one, and now they try to end it. How did they take game one? Boy, that guy, Brady Singer, the sophomore, 12 strikeouts, a college World Series finals record. They came up with the clutch hits and did just enough, and that's what they've done all year. Just enough, but LSU will prove to be a game component tonight as they got their ace on the mound in a game three and their winning his pitcher on the mound tonight. That guy is Jared Poche. Alongside Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, and Laura Rutledge with the amazing story of Jared Poche's dad saving a life last night coming up in just a little bit. That is certainly the bigger story than trying to save a season, but for Poche, that's what he's trying to do tonight. He's got more wins than anybody else in LSU history. It's one of the most decorated arms that's ever been at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and for Jared Poche tonight marks his 70th start at LSU. He already has two wins in this College World Series and seems to feel pretty comfortable on this stage. For Jared Poche, he's done just about everything in an LSU uniform, but there's one thing he hasn't done, and that's the very reason he came back to Baton Rouge. The grab four that Coach Minari talks about, you know, it's me, Greg, and Cole, and Kramer coming back. Um, 
and that's the reason we all we all came back to school is to you know get to Omaha and uh, you know win a national championship. You know, as the summer progressed, I remember thinking like, man, we got a lot of you know, we got a lot of talent coming back. We can do something special next year. Growing up and watching, you know, all those guys playing on previous national championship teams, how much fun they had, and you know, I want to be a part of that, and um, you know, hopefully we can make it happen. Well, he is certainly part of the recipe to win a title. Poche tonight and their number one 30th pick in the draft tomorrow night and Alex Lang, but you got to win this game tonight. And the old cliche, of course, is pitching and defense win ball games. Florida pitched last night and they played defense. The team that makes an error in the College World Series is 6-10. and 10. They haven't made an error in 41 innings. They haven't, and it all starts right up the middle when it comes to the defense. Dalton Guthrie is the epicenter of it all. He's the one that plays with grit, with pain. It doesn't matter. He's going to lay out and try to make every play possible. From then on, it's contagious. You go to Mike Rivera behind the plate, picking it, throwing out Robertson at second, and you want more arms from the outfield? This is Nick Horvath I introduced to you. He will be in center field tonight. He will be playing for the Gators. The defense is solid, and there is Mr. Guthrie. Yes, Dalton Guthrie, whose dad played for LSU, went on to a major league career. Twice he was in Omaha. Now his son is trying to win it all. There's Maneri and O'Sullivan. Last year, the storyline was win it for Gilly, and Coastal Carolina did. This year, names have changed, storylines the same. For Florida, it's win it for Sully. Laura Rutledge has that story after the break. When you're recruited by Sully, he says, you know, we've never won one. You know, maybe you can be the guy to help us lead us to the national championship. It's just something we've been talking about for so long. You know, this program's been so close. I dreamed about this, you know, once I made the decision to come here. Right now, this is like always been my number one priority. I want to win a national championship. I want to be on that list of the first people to win it for Florida and Gainesville. It's a dream come true to represent the University of Florida, have a chance to win a national championship for the baseball team. It's amazing. Game one winners have swept the College World Series finals seven times. And if Florida was able to win tonight, they bring the first ever Gator Baseball National Championship back to Gainesville. Kevin O'Sullivan said this may not be his most talented team top to bottom, but they've been one of the most fun to coach. It brings tears to his eyes when they jump over the dugout rail after a win. And he said it hasn't always been pretty, but this team is not short on grit, guys. They get plenty of that, and they certainly mirror the image of their Head coach, you see him, Kevin O'Sullivan, Laura mentioned, it may not be the best team that wins this thing. Think about Coastal Carolina last year, the Cinderella story, Virginia, a couple of years ago. It's the team playing the best, and after game one, that's Florida. They hope to get a similar start from this dude who O'Sullivan has already said, Kyle, is the next one. Yeah, I think we're going to see Tyler Dyson in the weekend rotation next year, but this is just his second start of the season. It is frontline stuff. You see a fastball that can get into the mid-90s sometimes, the upper 90s. I think key tonight, though, when LSU gets guys on base, you got to slow down the base pass because as a freshman, the only knock on Dyson right now, it's not the stuff, it's potentially the ability to hold runners on. And LSU can create havoc when they get on the base pass, especially early in the ballgame. No doubt. Robertson Freeman hope to get on and move around. They're at the top of this batting order. As we take a look at it, it's presented by Capital One. Focus today will be on the cleanup hitter, Greg Dykeman. Two for four yesterday with a double. The important thing is this. As a power hitter, left-handed power hitter, once he goes the other way, that means he's starting to get locked in. Keep an eye on that cleanup hitter. Neither team has actually tore the cover off the baseball, and Florida, if they win, may end up with one of the lowest, if not the lowest, batting averages ever for a College World Series champion. And it is a packed house, and it's a different weather pattern tonight than we've had. The wind is blowing in directly from center field. This College World Series, we have seen 23 home runs hit, which is a record, and it blew it up for TD Ameritrade. We're used to seeing 10 home runs like we did last year, but 23 already this season. You're going to hit him tonight. It feels like you're going to have to hit him right down the line, either left field line or the right field line, because from gap to gap, it's not going anywhere tonight. Kramer Robertson will start things off. He's the senior at 5'10", 168, McGregor, Texas. Went in the fourth round of the Cardinals, and that first pitch is in there at 93 miles an hour. If you're going to be anointed the next one at Florida, that means a great deal. We will not see Alex Fiedo tonight. 
He was the first round pick of the Detroit Tigers, went 18th overall, and has been outstanding at the College World Series. That's him right there. If they get to a game three, many Florida fans believe you could see him in relief, but there's a, there's a few hurdles to climb over before that happens. Brady Singer last right. night, those 12 strikeouts. Paul Maneri, the coach of LSU, I think he'll be the number one pick oh. in next year's draft. And now you get Dyson on the mound. It's a pitching factory in Florida. For Dyson, you've already seen the velocity, the fastball into the mid-90s. It's a very good slider behind it, too. Robertson to third. Jonathan India. Robertson is retired. For a kid that has made so few starts, Kyle, for that heart to start to come down a little bit, what's going to be the secret for him? Well, I think there's a few things. One, at least he's already pitched in this tournament, so the environment is not going to be different to him. He's been out there. But the second thing is to go back to the Super Regionals because they faced a Wake Forest offense that yeah. was one of the most powerful in the entire country. They led the nation in home runs. Dyson in that Super Regional, seven innings, two hits allowed, didn't walk anybody, struck out ten. So later in the season, Tyler Dyson has been his best. First pitch to Cole Freeman, the number two hitter, the senior, 5'9", 174 pounds. All Freeman does is get on base. Got an on-base streak that was extended to 30 in the Game 1 Finals. And no secret here at this stadium, it's over 80% fans are here from LSU. And what you have to do is shut down this offense early, try to score. That's what Dyson has to do. Shut down the offense and shut down the fans. Two and one. Troy Fullwood's going to call balls and strikes for us tonight. Heath Jones is your umpire at first. Steve Mattingly down there at second. And Greg Street at third. Outfield playing in considerably with the wind on the ground. And that's through. And the speedy Cole Freeman takes a big turn at first. And he puts the brakes on as Guthrie chased that ball down in shallow left. On base again, 31 straight games for Freeman. Looked like India mistimed this right off the bat. Should have had it right yeah. then and there. Wonder if he should not have tried to dive for that baseball. Looked like he was in between a dive or whether or not he, think he could get there standing up. And you could see that ball almost went over the middle of his body when he went to go dive. But it'll go as a single for Cole Freeman, who can absolutely fly. See, with Dyson on the mound and his relative inexperience, Rivera has been very good behind the plate, throwing guys out. If LSU gets anything going here with Antoine Duplantis, the three-hole hitter. Fastball goes high. LSU had a couple of runners thrown out at second last night. And those of you watching at home, many LSU fans wondering if we had instant replay with those calls have been overturned. Again, there is no instant replay on plays at the bases like you're used to at the major league level. Freeman not going. This one popped up in the air and shallow. The wind's got it. It's blowing it back in, and it's the second baseman, Deacon Lippitt, who makes the play. And there's a great example. If you look at that flag in center field, it is blowing hard straight in. I don't think we've had it blown in from center this hard in this entire tournament. In fact, mo most times it's been blown out yeah. as opposed to blowing in, but 20 to 21 miles an hour from a 408 sign straight towards home plate. Uh, and it's a straight ch game, game plan change right here. If you're the middle infielders, you have to go out after any fly ball. Cannot give up on it. Here's Greg Dykeman. He's got all sorts of power in that bat, the right fielder. 19 home runs, and the A's loved him. They took him in the second round. Some college baseball news today, guys. I don't know if you saw it, but the Rays, who selected Brendan McKay, the two-way player from Louisville, who we saw here, and you could argue had three of the best collegiate years of anybody ever, agreed to a deal for over $7 million. Dykeman gets under that one, and let's see if the wind plays havoc with it. The third baseman, India, is there, and he makes the play. Good inning for Tyler Dyson. Talk to Jared Poche's dad, who last night did something few of us ever do. He saved a life.
Welcome back, everyone. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Bottom of the first, Florida comes to the plate against Jared Poche, the great lefty for LSU. Last night, while his dad was in the stands watching, Dr. Jerry Poche was approached and said, we need your help. And they did indeed. He ended up saving a man's life. Just a few minutes ago, Laura caught up with Dr. Jerry Poche. Thanks, Dr. Poche. How would you describe the events that had you saving a man's life yesterday? Oh, it was it's pretty amazing. Uh, I got called to go help a, a fella that was in trouble. I come to find out he wasn't breathing. Uh, I didn't have a pulse. Uh, clinically, he was dead. We got him down on the ground, started compressions, and, and we we actually got him back. What is it like to save somebody's life? It's an amazing feeling. Uh, that's just what I do all, my whole life. That's my whole career. But it, it's always a great feeling to know that I help someone. Thank you so much. All right. Such an amazing story. He didn't tell his son. He didn't want to be a distraction. Of course, everybody now on the LSU team knows about what happened last night. And just uh, like all doctors, you are always on call. And in fact, earlier this week, after a Young boy was hit by a baseball. They right away went to Dr. Poche and he helped them out in that situation. But last night, amazingly, he saved a man's life and that man now listed in good condition. It's great news and now he gets a chance to watch his son on the mound. And Jared Poche has, he's done things in his uniform that nobody has. He's comfortable on this stage and he's already shown it so far in this College World Series. I do think tonight though he's got to pitch into the seventh inning. For LSU to have a chance to go through and win this thing, they need one of their two aces and Jared Poche is one of them to go deep into this ball game and give him a chance. So he may end up with his uh, teammate Dykeman on the A's if they can both get there. He was selected in the ninth round. Capital One batting order for Florida. KJ Schwartz in the three spot against Poche. March 25th, one for three with a double two runs. They are going to need Schwartz to be aggressive at the plate, use the entire field. All right, we'll start with Deacon Lippett, the second baseman. He's a sophomore at 5'10", 190 pounds out of Oviedo, Florida in the first pitch. He's away, it's 1-0. Lippett and Guthrie, the table setters for Schwartz, and really the bulk of the offense has come from the bottom of these orders. In fact, both of them. That one's in there for a strike. Kyle, March 25th, Poche against Florida. One of his bumps in the road, four innings, four runs six hits allowed how much does that factor into tonight's approach his thinking the Gators thinking offensively I'm sure it's in the back of his mind he, he wasn't sharp in that one and Poche came into that one about as sharp as anybody in the entire country at that point but he walked four he hit two gave up three and runs in those four innings and had a wild pitch it was just one of those nights where he just never seemed to be comfortable foot race to first Poche lip it safe at first base it went off of the chest of Nick Coombs, who's playing first base tonight, and then it was a foot race. And right here, as soon as that ball hits dirt, he has to charge or either take a couple steps back as a first baseman, stays in the in the between hop, blocks it with his chest, and the hustle right there, he's, he's safe. Good hustle by Lippitt, going down the line. And a good call by Heath Jones. So leadoff man aboard for Florida. That brings up Dalton Guthrie, who was playing with terrible back spasms earlier this week. In fact, had to come out of a game. He was able to play last night, played through it, made an unbelievable catch in foul territory. I mean, think about the idea that you had back spasms. You were getting treatment for it. Before the game, you were dealing with some more pain and then and then you have to go and dive on dirt to early. make a catch early on. Ripped into right center field that's going to get down and Guthrie sends Lippitt to third base. LSU gets the ball back in but the Gators are in business in Poche's world right out of the gate. Well, that's the same approach as yes. he had yesterday. Thing. Right center field, staying through it, not trying to do too much. That's what happens when you have those back pains, you can't overswing. It's a fluid swing throughout. Poche trying to get that double play, trying to get him to roll over, goes the other way. 
Now you have runners at the corners. J.J. Schwartz at the plate. College World Series note, the team that has scored first at the College World Series has won 13 games in a row. They rule Lippitt's infield hit, a hit, no error. And the Gators with runners on are hitting 298. Chance for J.J. Schwartz here. Real generous tonight from an official scorer standpoint if that first one's a hit. Yep. Gators win tonight. They win the College World Series, and they are trying to break through first here in the first against Poche. Schwartz is only two for 19. Up. Hey. Well, Michael Kapierski with a 2 0 count, and you can tell Poche very frustrated. And the last time we saw Troy Fullwood, he had one of the more pitcher friendly strike zones. I thought it was one of the best zones that we've seen so far at this College World Series. Troy Fullwood has been very consistent behind the plate, and I think he's been fine so far today. I mean, that curveball to me looked like it was high. Right now, you just have to focus on trying to get the double play. Josh Smith at third base playing way too much in, even with the bag at third. J.J. Schwartz, lefty on right. He hit some shots down that hot corner. Play. Get two, forget about the runner at third. And that gets through, and Florida breaks on top, forced three consecutive singles, and they lead it 1-0. And again, that note, the team that has scored first has won the last 13 College World Series games. About 2-0 fastball, and J.J. Schwartz just keeping the party going right here. Fastball, they're trying to go away. That one kind of has some cut to it. You'll see that sometimes from Poche. Trying to throw the two-seamer away. That one comes back into the barrel. Back to back to back singles for the Gators to start this one off. And it's an early 1-0 lead and an early trip to the mound for Allen Dunn. I can't imagine, and Kyle, you can tell us what this is doing for Tyler Dyson over there on the bench. Well, two things. One, a clean first. Yep. So now you're sitting in there after already having been in the ball game, and you look up, you've got a one nothing lead, and there's still nobody out and two guys standing on base. Exactly. What's he scuffled he against him? Florida. Look at that. I mean, this is historically against Florida, and the start in Gainesville this year was not all that sharp either. Generally with Poche, if he's going to have problems, it comes in the first two innings. If you can allow him to settle in, you're usually going to look, look up in the sixth or seventh and he's still going to be out there, but Florida has struck quick today. You better start using that curveball now. That's the pitch that will get him out of a jam. That fastball right now with the velocity, this is the type of velocity that the Florida Gators love feasting off. And this is their best on-base guy they have in the lineup. Nelson Maldonado is the designated hitter. Sophomore at 5'10 out of Tampa, Florida. And once again, Poche falls behind. Florida hasn't gotten a lot of their leadoff guys on. Only 9 of 37, but now six of those nine, including Lippitt, have come around to score. Maldonado, 4 of 16 at the World Series. This one to right field. It sends Dykeman back. It's going over his head, and he makes a great catch. Both runners tag, and they are both safe. But wow, with the wind blowing as it is, Dykeman didn't read it right. Three things went well. Great baseball all around. First, Maldonado taking this breaking pitch, going the other way with it, making sure that runner from second moves. The play from Dykeman in right field, and then the presence of mind of both runners, Schwartz and Guthrie, advancing on this play. Great play all around, both by the Tigers and by the Gators. Now the question's going to be, did Guthrie leave second base early? He definitely went back with the intent to tag. That ball carried a little bit further than I thought it was going to, and, and clearly a little bit further than Dykeman thought that it was going to, but that could end up being a game-saving catch that he just made. All right, so Cole Freeman's explaining what should happen here. He's going to get on the mound. You don't call time. And he's going to either appeal first base or second base. He's going to appeal first base. 
call. The umpires say safe. I'll say this about Guthrie. If he did leave on time, he left the second it hit Dykeman's glove. Maldonado, a sack fly, moves him up into scoring position for Jonathan India. And the five through nine hitters delivered last night. They had four RBI late on that one. I make him chase from here on out. I don't throw him anything good. You have a left-handed hitter in Austin Langworthy behind him. Then tough Mike Rivera. O'Shea trying to navigate around three consecutive singles. Only one run in. Sophomore India behind 0-1. Chases one in the dirt and a good block by Papierski. 0-2. Anxious at the play, Daddy? Little anxious. You have those runners right there, second and third. This is where you have to know Jonathan India. You have to know the situation. You have a left-handed hitter hitting behind you. Pochet's trying to limit the damage. Chased another one, and he's gone in a big, big strike gut for Jared Pochet. So you can see in the background, Dykeman will catch it there, and he tags there. So he's good at that first good. base. That was good. Yeah, that was good, too. Good call by the umpire and crew. Neither left early. It's great camera work also. And now Austin Langworthy, who has really struggled his last two dozen games, 18 for 90, which is 200, but it's getting a little warmer here in Omaha. Five hits and 15 at bats. One here could score two more. If Poche can get out of this thing, only giving up one run, you feel like uh, you feel like you kind of stole one right now if you're LSU because Single, single, single on a ball off the bat of Maldonado that looked like it might short hop the fence in right field, but he's one pitch away from getting out of it, giving up just a solo run. Got three at third, Schwartz at second. Chases a high one, and Pochet bearing down is a strike away from getting out of it. Dad, Dr. Jerry Pochet sits and watches. He's watched his son all the way through his LSU career, his high school career, and this is the biggest start of his life. Hey. Hold on. Catchers. Catchers, 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 unless they tell you to take the baseball out. Don't turn around and give it to the home plate umpire. Let your guy in the mound decide if he wants to take it out of play. You don't, you don't turn around and offer it. Take it up and throw it back. If the guy wants to take it out, he'll tell you. So what's your point on the baseball for people who are watching at home? Why are you so uh You want it scuffed up. Yeah. You throw one down the dirt and they don't they don't make you throw the baseball out. I, I just let the guy on the mound make the decision as to whether or not you want it. If you don't like the feeling of it, you can take it and throw it back in. That's totally different. Watch Papierski's like, nah, we're good. Why don't, why don't we throw this one out? We don't want that. <laughs> Come on now. I'm hoping the hitter said something. Hey, could you uh, please check that baseball? I'm hoping. Langworthy uh, had the wind knocked out of him on that foul ball. So the athletic trainer has gone out to talk to him. The 
Here's the pitcher for Florida, staying loose. O'Sullivan and John Nicolino, the athletic trainer, head back to the dugout. Langworthy taking a few breaths, got a little smile on his face. One and two with two down here in the first. They got one, they're trying to get more as Poche is trying to extinguish this flame. one's going to get into the seats. Take a look at that crowd. There have been massive crowds. Last night, over 25,600. This one's going to be bigger. This one, they're six, eight deep in GA. And that is the longest general admission line I've ever seen in my entire life. And they were down to the Hilton. That's block and a half, two blocks away. Then wrapped back through all the way in the parking lot. A lot of them are in purple and gold. Parking lot was full. Tailgating today started early. First ticket in the general admission line was at 5.30 a.m. 1-2 left field. Will it hang up for DePlantis? Yes. He's able to reach down and grab it. The Gators strand two. Poche and his dad will take one. Could have been a lot worse. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by the Subway $6 footlong sub of the day. We are back as you see some images of these two teams. The final two teams after the field of 64. Eight of them come to Omaha. We had the Titans, Cal State Fullerton, the Gators, LSU, Cardinals of Louisville were here. Oregon State ends up 56 and 6 this season, one of the great seasons in college baseball history. Texas A&M and the Horned Frogs of TCU, but the last two standing out of the SEC. They each won their respective divisions, co-champions, and now they're trying to settle the big picture here in Omaha. Start things off with Zach Watson. He's been their best hitter at the College World Series in the first pitch from Tyler Dyson is fouled off. What we've seen it early with Zach Watson. They go with the fastball early. After that, it's all been off speed down and away, getting him to chase. In there for a strike, 0 oh and 2, and Watson pauses for a second. Eight for 22, a double, a home run, two RBIs. Freshman at six feet, 166. And one of the best center fielders we likely will see at the next level. He can move, so Guthrie gets it and fires quickly to get him. So we saw that appeal play on that tag up that was legal. Here's how the umpire explained it to the catcher. Time is out, time is out. Let me put the ball back in play. I'm not going to Let him get on the mound. Let, let him get on the mound, and then I'm going to put it in play. Let him get in the box, and I'll put the ball in play. Here we go. You ready? So that was well explained because it's one of the more confusing things, especially right. at the youth level. How do we do this? Do we call timeout? You don't do that because if the time's out, well, nothing can really happen. Time's going to be in. That was Troy Fullwood saying right there, let me put the ball back in play. So right. if you're going to appeal, let me put the ball back in play, then you can go from there. But ultimately, Paul Maneri was on the bench saying, no, let it go, let it go. Josh Smith, this one's to the gap. Who's going to get it? That just faded into the glove of Austin Langworthy. The wind took that right towards the left fielder, and he ran right into it. Good wood or good aluminum from Smith. Watch this route out in left field by Langworthy, too. And this is when you know that the wind is just going to bring it all the way back to him. Has to go a little bit deeper right there, but you can see those last few steps where he kind of pulls up. He knows he's all the way there, calling for it early. And in that spot, the wind is helping Langworthy, bringing it right back in towards him. So two quick outs for Tyler Dyson, who's been very efficient. Five outs so far, 15 pitches. Yep, he's throwing strikes, getting ahead. This is Nick Coombs, the first baseman, junior 5'11", Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Homegrown kid, grew up in the shadows of Alex Box, and now he gets to play for him in the College World Series. 0-2. Dyson pitching with the same efficiency and pace that we saw from Singer last night. 
Ball that's up. Close, but it's not really where you want to throw it there. 0-2, you could see Mike Rivera moved all the way out. They were trying to bury that slider, and Dyson just got a little bit quick. Coombs and Jake Slaughter have split time. Slaughter played first last night. Coombs tonight. Play. He's got five at-bats at the College World Series. He's got a couple of hits. Slow roller and a tough play if it's going to stay fair, and it is. Swinging bunt for Nick Coombs and an awkward approach of the ball by Tyler Dyson. You have to love that with two strikes on you. Tough pitch down. Ball stays fair. There's nothing you can do here if you're the defense. You just try to let it see if it rolls out. Mm. Nice play by Dyson, just trying not to catch that baseball. Almost slips right there, keeps his balance. Ball dies right on the line. That's the right play, Kyle, right? It absolutely was the right play to me, and it was Mike Rivera that told him to do it, too. You could see Rivera saying, let it go, let it go, let it go. It's the only chance you have. I yeah. mean, if you pick it up, try to speed up a throw, you could throw it down the right field line and totally change everything. I mean, at least half the time, that ball's going to hit the edge of the grass and roll foul. Watch Rivera. So Rivera's trailing this one. He's got a great shot at it. and You can see those arms start going, let it go, let it go. But then it just... It just stayed. I mean, it, the spin of it looked like it was going to take it all the way foul, and it just hung right on the edge of the grass. Looked like your golf game. <laughs> Not today. Here's a guy that can hit one out of the yard, wind or no wind, Michael Papirski. Did something no one has ever done in College World Series history. We played our 1,000th game during this World Series. We're now up to, I think, 1,008. No one had ever hit a home run from both sides of the plate in the same game until he did this week. Oh. One and one. The other part that we haven't got into yet is Dyson on the mound is a converted shortstop, and I don't mean like converted in ninth grade. This is a guy that played shortstop through high school. Not only is he making only a second start, but he's only been pitching for a couple of years. Yeah, just towards the end of his high school year, or is the end of his high school career is when he started pitching. I think he's going to pitch for a while, though. This one ripped into center field. Horvath is there, and that one may have gone a lot longer earlier this week when the wind was blowing dead out blowing in a little different night at td ameritrade gators up one zip we've been through so much this season so much adversity and we fought through it and we, we just have a lot of heart you know we play as a team together we have each other's backs no matter what the situation is we know we can handle it everyone's gone through ups and downs it hasn't been easy but it's all paid off the finals now. Hopefully, the University of Florida gets our first national championship. The university has won almost 40 championships, but not one in college baseball. How'd they get here? They won their first five. And of course, one game one against LSU. The offense is not killing it, boys and girls. A 204 average, 17 runs, but boy, that starting pitching has been silly. 54 strikeouts and 33 and a third. And while Tyler Dyson has pitched really well. Looks a little bit different tonight than Singer, and he doesn't have a strikeout yet. I would say this if you're Kevin O'Sullivan, when you showed up the ballpark and you saw the flag coming in at 21 mm -hmm. miles an hour, I put a big smile on your face when yeah. you came in because it, it plays right into Florida's game plan. This is Mike Rivera, the sixth round pick. Hit. He was taken by the Cleveland Indians in the 2017 draft. All told, you got 16 players combined, eight of the Gators and eight LSU players taken to the draft this year in the first 40 rounds. You got to go, you got to go hard blue and red if, if all the purple and gold is around you. You got to represent. Pretty impressive. That red. Right field tailing towards the seat. Steichman is over there and he watches it get about five or six rows deep. And to that end, Kyle and Eduardo, we've seen now since we've opened the ballpark up in 2011, uh, generally not a lot of home runs. This year's a little different, but Paul Maneri said something interesting. He said, I've actually built my teams. I've recruited athletes, defenders, not necessarily the home run guys. As Rivera hits this one to right, and Dykeman goes towards the line to make the play. 
that he's actually building teams for Omaha, Nebraska, for the ballpark. I would say the outfield in particular. So you look at LSU's outfield. DePlantis in left can fly. Watson in center can fly. Dykeman already made a very good defensive play tonight and has turned himself into a very good defensive right fielder. If you can't defend, you do not win at this level right now the way that it's played, especially in this place. No doubt. Different, different frame of reference when you when you recruit for your program, but with the real significant eye yeah. on Omaha. Like that ballpark where we're going to end up, you know, every summer, well, we got to be ready to play in that ballpark. How can you win in this big ballpark? And that's exactly what you have to do. You have to have speed and athleticism in that outfield. And power arms. And I think Florida's at least been at or ahead of the curve that way. Yeah. From a power arm standpoint, yeah. nobody has had more power arms than Florida and Vanderbilt. Those two just continually seem to run out guy after guy that are mid-90s guys. Vanderbilt won the whole thing with Tim Corbin three years ago. This one lifted to center field off the bat of Ryan Larson. Blows towards right. Look out! A little collision out there between Dykeman and Watson. It's Dykeman who held on to it. The wind is going to move it around out there. Dykeman's going to win this one. I don't think Watson ever called it. No, I don't know if he did or not. It's, Dykeman's not a guy you really want to run into out there. Number nine hitter in the order is Nick Horvath, and uh, this guy is a typical college baseball player on a lot of levels. He pitches. He was used as a pinch runner last night, and he was brought in to play center field. Made a great defensive play by throwing out a runner at second base from center field. To third underneath the dive of Josh Smith. And once again, bottom of the order delivers for the Gators. Horvath is aboard. He'll be multi-talented, multi-faceted. Well, you talk about being a game changer, and Nick Horvath coming in late for defense. Coach O'Sullivan puts him out there, and this is how he rewards him. Nice throw to second base, getting a big out at second base. Buddy Boob texted me last night, too, and it was a good point. If it's a right-handed center fielder, he's safe. I mean, the only guy that can make that play is the left-handed center fielder, which Horvath is going to that side. He was already open, a lot easier to make that throw, and it took a perfect strike to have any chance. Back to the top of the order, Deacon Lippitt, the official scorer, must have hurt Kyle. Lippitt was originally awarded a single on that bouncer to first base that went off the chest of Coombs. Remember, he then beat it out and came around to score after a couple more singles. Well, that has been changed to an error, so it's an unearned run charged to Poche. Not an earned run. And that was the right call. They throw, they got him picked off. Now the ball is dropped and a big break for Florida. Horvath was caught between first and second, and Coombs had to come out of his glove. As a first baseman, you have to attack this throw. You cannot stay there at first base. You attack, you cover some ground, and then you bring the baseball towards your chest to make the exchange. You see how there's separation between the chest and the glove. That's where a lot of mistakes are made. It's called about funneling in and making that exchange close to your body. It's a big mitt. A lot of mistakes are made outside of the body. Well, now a chance for Lippitt to drive in a run. He swings like he wanted to hit it out of the yard, and he's behind 0-2. Told you at the top, errors here generally hurt World Series. Teams that have committed at least one are six and ten. Remember the three games that LSU played here prior to this. Jake Slaughter started at first base. Yes. Nick Coombs in there tonight and has not looked terribly comfortable yet. One and two. Coombs did get a single when he batted in the second inning. Keep giving away out to keep adding pitches to Jared Poche. Florida wins tonight. They win the whole thing. LSU could force a game three tomorrow night. Back up the middle. Pass Robertson. Rounding third is Lippitt. And it is 2-0. I should say Horvath who comes in to score. So the mistake 
costs Florida big time. He can lip it, RBI. Guys, we talk about the errors being made and good teams capitalizing on this. Florida Gators capitalizing on that mistake at first base and then the big base hit with two strikes by Lippitt up the middle. He that, knows the importance of it. That 0-2? 1-2. 0-2, 1-2. But two. he really stayed on the breaking ball. Left on left breaking ball the second time today. The Lippitt has seen Poche that time shot it right back up the middle. Well, now Dalton Guthrie who shot one into right field the first time up. This one on the ground. Kick. Robertson still got to play. Safe! And another error for LSU. What's going on? LSU had been really good in the field. The 981 fielding percentage. Smith makes his ninth error of the season. Defensively, too, that's, I mean, this is one of the better teams you'll see in the entire country over the course of the season, but it has not looked that way so far for LSU today. Josh Smith's probably going to be the shortstop next year, and this one, they're lucky to even had a chance to make this play because that hardly hit his glove, goes right off his shoe. Kramer Robertson in the right spot, but Guthrie, that right foot hits just before the baseball gets to Coombs at first base, so LSU should have been out of this inning twice already. J.J. Schwartz to the plate who already has a single today. Fullwood calls out a strike to J.J. Schwartz, and then he tells him to stay right here. Three errors in the game for LSU. That one is inside. Coombs had the error on the drop ball. And then Smith, so three errors. And you see, I mentioned the Florida streak, 41 consecutive innings. They had had one that had been 30 innings without an error. Side. Second straight inning, and this puts a lot of pressure on the defense, on Poche. But they've had traffic on the base paths. This is green light right here for JJ, and you better be careful. Hit a 2 0 fastball the last time to left field for a single. I'm just surprised that Smith is still playing in. A couple steps behind the bag. You have to play deep here. Runner at second. Oh. Three and one. Three and one. A.J. Schwartz has been around. He's a junior. He played in the College World Series a couple of years ago, but he has 37 career home runs. And he went from being a 17th round pick a couple of years ago to being a 38th round pick because his numbers have come down a little bit. There's a chance you get him back next year. Chance for a big hit here at 3-1, and he was swinging for it. Going. This one on the ground is short. Good hop for Robertson. He sprints over to first. He held the bag. A nearly disastrous play there. I've seen Robertson do it a bunch where he'll take a few steps toward first, but this time give Coombs, who's got a couple of errors, credit for keeping that right foot on the bag and nearly doing a full split to make the play. Ooh. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. In between innings, all the umpires got together. Kevin O'Sullivan went out and just asked if they would just communicate amongst themselves on whether Coombs kept the bag with his foot. He did, and the uh, umpires then reminded us that he was called out once, and he's still out. The bigger issue there, and I would ask you, Eddie, is what was Robertson doing 
This was the discussion that they had in between innings. Let's listen in. Hey, uh, what do you got? I got him. I, I got him catching the ball, then coming off the base. So catching it, foot on the base, foot on the base. Out. Right. You got a good angle. What do you have? I got the same thing. I got him standing on there. I got a guy coming. I got a guy running. But you got score. him on the base. Yeah, I, I don't. I can't say that guy's not that bad. I will tell you from my angle. I also created an angle. Yeah. I saw him catch on the bag and come off. Right. That's what what I did have. you have, Greg? Right? I got him on. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go go with that as well. Okay, so, uh, I'll, yeah. go ahead, I'll go ahead. Signal. Signal. Point and get him cannon. So nope. we'll go right here. Yeah, yeah. There, right here. Yeah. He's out. Terrific job by the umpire and crew to make sure that uh, they were in the majority in agreement. And they were. Jones, Mattingly Street, Collins, and Winters as we bring them in down the left and right field line to have that conversation. It's perfect. Get everybody's opinion just to make sure nobody saw it differently. And in the end, they were all absolutely right. Just surprised me, Kramer Robertson taking like five steps to yeah, I didn't throw that baseball. pitch strike how about the effort that Dyson's putting up by throwing that first pitch strike and getting ahead it seems like every batter well it's big and if he stays this efficient too he can work deep into this ball game slider misses this is Bo Jordan the DH out of Lake Charles Louisiana and of course in August we'll have the Little League World Series Bo Jordan's Lake Charles Louisiana team was there he played with his brother not too long ago Bottom of the zone, he gets the called strike at 93 miles an hour. What do you like about Tyler Dyson? For a guy that throws this hard, it's pretty simple mechanics. There's not a lot moving, so he starts out of the stretch and shows you again that you don't have to go to the windup to throw hard. It's just kind of get it and go. Not a lot of hard contact, Laura. Yeah, and as you guys mentioned, Tyler Dyson, of course, not beginning to pitch until his senior year of high school. When he got to Florida, he was around the mid-80s to upper 80s in velocity. Kevin O'Sullivan got a hold of him, raised the arm slot a little bit, taught him not to drag his elbow and push the ball, instead to throw it. And suddenly, he's throwing mid-90s, even touching 97 at times. Guys, he got his slider grip from Alex Fiedo, but he doesn't think about throwing a slider. He thinks about actually just throwing a fastball. He's getting some help from his fielders while Jared Poche is not. That one was sent into center field and Nick Horvath makes the play. A little more on Dyson and how he ends up at Florida. He grew up in a town outside of Boston, Uxbridge, Massachusetts. He grows up in a neighborhood that has Rick Azadorian. I'm not sure a lot of people remember that name, but Rick Azadorian grew up in the same town as the Dyson kids did. He was a little bit older and he was recruited to play baseball at Florida. At the same time, the Red Sox drafted him in the first round. So he ended up choosing to go and play professional baseball. But at the same time, all the little kids in the neighborhood, because Rick was such a popular guy, fell in love with the Gators because that's where he was going to go. So literally the seed for Dyson and Florida was planted when he was like two years old. As the Dorian's down in Florida, that's where the Dyson family moves when he's about eight years old. And he and Azadorian get together. And Azadorian's the one that says, you can throw it like 95. So instead of the shortstop thing, you should become a pitcher. And that's how he ends up being a pitcher at Florida. As Laura talked about how he transitioned and Kyle from a shortstop to a pitcher with about a year to go in high school. Well, he's not going back short. <laughs> no, he's not. He's, he's found his home now. You know what the fun part about it is? That's a fresh arm, too. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yep. You're a scout. You know that that arm does not have a lot of mileage in it. It's also a fresh arm tonight. Yes, it is. Because he has not had that many innings over the course of this year. The longest outing for Dyson this year was five innings against Wake Forest in the Super Region. And the former shortstop slips, throws from his knees, out at first base. Well, that's how to pay the story off as a former shortstop. You can get it over there from your knees. Balls don't leave the infield. And he's there to catch it. And he threw out one of the fastest guys in the country in Cole Freeman. Right now, it's all going Gators way. Two and a half in the books, two nothing, Florida.
TD Ameritrade and the locals, it's starting to grow on them here. Of course, Rosenblatt Stadium had hosted the College World Series, and so now we're at TD Ameritrade, have been for 2011, and we got a long, long-term deal with the College World Series in this ballpark. Jake Slaughter has come on to play first base, where he has played most of the time. Nick Coombs, who really struggled defensively, is out of the game as we begin the third inning, and Nelson Maldonado. Two ways to look at it. They've been sloppy, and they should be down, but the truth is they're only down 2-0, and yeah. they've been real sloppy. They should probably be down more than this. Florida's left four guys on in the first two innings. Oh. And he watched Maldonado, and he gets very relaxed, or it seems to be at the plate. Before that ball comes in, he gets into a real good hitting position, doesn't he? Back up the middle, he's got a hit. He's comfortable at the plate. Sees the ball really well off Poche, March 25th. Had a very good game against him also. And what he does, he stays up the middle the other way. We saw that fly ball to right field earlier. And there, right back up the middle. Trusting his hands. Holding that bat light, comfortable. Gets that leg kick up. And once that foot comes down, just shoots it right back up the middle. Lead off man aboard India. Talk to Kevin O'Sullivan. This is the guy that he says may have the most upside of anybody in this lineup. And why do you think he says that, Kyle? Well, offensively, and the numbers might not play it out this year. India hitting 269 coming into the game with six home runs, but he's just a guy that Kevin O'Sullivan thinks is going to continue to grow as a hitter and defensively really thinks that he can stick a 